Uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We're also rebuilding the family. I'm trying to adjust my headset here, folks. By rebuilding the man. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Good morning. Welcome to the show. Thank you all so much for being with me. I do appreciate it. You can get involved by calling. 888-775-3773. 888-77-3773. 888-77-JESSE. J-E-S-S-E. JESSE. My biblical question for this week. The biblical question. Do you have more va- morals and values? If so, where did you find them? Now, I'm having an issue with that because I keep thinking it's written wrong. It's said wrong. And no one seemed to have straightened it out for me. Can someone get hate? Can come here for me? Let me figure. Uh, So what now? Oh, it's not? It's the proper? Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. It's proper they told me now. Do you have mores and values? If so, where did you find them? Where did you find them? We have every way that you can watch and support the show listed on jessaleepeterson.com slash show. jessaleepeterson.com slash show. And if you uh, land up at a beach... Making breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It all depends on where you are in this world. Because we are heard around the world by everybody and their mama. And if you're a flat earther, we are heard up and down the world by everybody and their mama. So whatever you might be doing, you could be listening to the show on your iPhone or iPad by calling the listen line at 641-793-1503. 641-793-1500. And of course, you can podcast the show later. All of the shows, all the time. And to donate and have your comments read out loud, Go to buymeacoffee.com slash JLP Talk. Buymeacoffee.com slash JLP Talk or rebuildingdemand.com. Rebuildingdemand.com. And bond JLP on Cash App. Bond JLP on Cash App. All right. To donate and have your comments read out loud. Also, like, follow, ring the bell, follow us on social media. Subscribe to JLP Radio Network on YouTube and Instagram. JLP Radio Network on YouTube and Instagram. All right? Like, follow, ring the bell, all that stuff. We're on X, JLP Talk on X. It's Tuesday, and every Tuesday is... Country and Western Tuesday. Bring back, bring back, oh, bring back my country to me. Bring back, bring back, bring back my country to me. 
let the dogs out. Woo. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Country and Western Tuesday. Country and Western Tuesday. Amazing. I, um, uh, I, um, uh, I want to tell you this, and then you smoke on it, do what you want with the information, because I realize not all, and I'm totally okay with it. I do understand it clearly. Above all things, get an understanding. I understand that only a few people want to change. Most people love their hell. They love their thrills. They love being in that animal nature. And that they can identify with the animal much better than they can identify with human beings. And it's interesting seeing that, too. I just, I've never seen this in my whole life. Well, as long as I've been on the earth. This is new. It's been happening over the last, it started to come about, I guess, five or ten years ago, give or take, that human beings are really, well, it's always been known since mankind that human beings are in a fallen state, animal nature. I mean, you can look at how they treat one another. They treat each other like animals, have no love, right? But it has gotten worse that they are now, like, gladly identifying with animals. And they have, they're in such an animal nature of saints so low that they can hardly identify with human beings anymore. I wonder what God think about that. He created human beings in his image. And I know why now, I understand. Humans decided to identify with animals, with evil. To a point they don't even want you to tell them that they identify with evil. They identify with animals. They have an animal mindset. And I know for a fact, and without a doubt, without a doubt at all, it was brought on by the female. Because females, you know, the gates of hell come through the woman, and she identified, whatever she identified with, she imposed that on the children, on the men, and, and because men don't understand and they're weak, they go along with it. Men have never been identified with animals as they are today. And they've always had animals around, hunting animals, white dogs around the house, not in the house, but around the house to protect them from uh, criminals. But they have never gone as deeply as they are today in identifying with animals. And it feels good to their animal nature that they identify with animals, and they think that's how the animals feel. And it's, um, it's, 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 um, it's, it's, it's whatever. They let the animals eat out of their dishes in the home, sleep in their bed, use the toilet in the bed. They, treat that. they have weakened the animals in the same way they weaken children. And they call it good. They call it love. Think about that. How will my country ever get better when human beings are going deeper into hell rather than making a strong attempt to overcome hell? Uh, this past Sunday at our fellowship, and you can check it out at rebuildingtheman.com slash church, rebuildingtheman.com slash church. We taught... I mentioned uh, in New York last week, I guess now, there was a fight on a train where two men attacked one another and a female. And they were fighting like bears. And for no good reason, 
except that both their egos have was hurt. Their animal nature was hurt. And so instead of overcoming that animal nature, they fought one another like animals on the train. And a female that was with one of them allegedly stabbed one of the guys in the back with a knife. And then the, the people around them on that train screaming and yelling, let me out of here, like wild animals do when the bears are fighting they try to run away. You're in an animal state. You're in an animal nature. And that's why you have no love. Human beings don't treat each other with love anymore. Remember Christ said to love one another? to pray for one another. That's out the window now. That is, that's so far out of the window. No one even talk about it anymore. The animal nature is alive and well, and it can only lead to this. Poor animal. They're not going to be able to survive in the, in the wildness now. They were created to survive. Their coats change every year. They're out there finding food. Their medicine was the earth. You never had to take dogs to the doctor before. They ate grass or they ate whatever's out there that's provided for them to heal their bodies. And now human beings pay buku money and feel good about it. And the, and the animal doctors are too willing to take it. And they even, just think about this, they even have created, they have created animal spaces now where people pay and go run the little pets around. And so they're making money off these people who are in an animal nature. They even convince human beings to put clothes on animals and say how cute it is. And because the animal owner is in an animal state, they think it's cute, and they think everybody else is supposed to think it's cute. What the? <laughs> you must be born again. This is not good, for You're worshiping evil. You're headed down the path of destruction. Can you imagine Adam and Eve having a dollhouse? It's all animal nature, and it's all about money. They're using the weak animal nature people to make buku money. And believe me, they're making tons of money. And the only thing the animal owner is getting is a good feeling, a thrill, because they think the animal loves them, and they think they love the animal. They would persecute human beings they would get revenge. They wouldn't pray for you, but they would with the animal. And they literally think they have a baby. <laughs> this is my baby. This is my child. One woman we showed to you a while back now, I guess a woman was trying to steal her dog, and she jumped on the, I believe, I may be wrong about the story, I may not have it totally clear now, it's been a while, she either fell on the hood of a car trying to get the dog or was on, jumped on the hood trying to stop the thieves over a dog. And then the, the people who make money off the animal nature people, they make dogs special. They, they'll mix them up and they call it a, a Shawawi or Poo Poo Dog or they'll put a name on it and make the dog expensive, and now everybody want the dog. So they can walk around with, knowing that other people looking at them with this expensive dog, and they get thrills from that. You must be born again. What a sad world we now live in. Dogs were doing just fine before somebody figured out how to make money off them. 
And now the dog got all kinds of health issues, just like the human beings. Where before they didn't have that. Oh, my dog got cancer. I had to take my dog to a cancer doctor. What the? What did the dog do about cancer beforehand? I never heard of a dog having cancer growing up. I do remember seeing dogs when they got sick or something. They would eat grass and they would throw whatever it was up and they would be fine. Really, no, no cost to anyone. No cost emotionally and no cost financially. May God have mercy on human nature. Christ said your nature must change. Your nature is evil. You have an animal nature. That's why you need to be born again of the Father so you can have a Father's nature, a God's nature. This is from the hill. Just to show you how bad it has gotten. And it's going to get worse because they are making buku money off this. And the people, the advertising people, they're not going to stop. They know they got you. This is from the hill. When it comes to name it our pets, lots of American favor popular choices such as Max, Charles, or Charlie, or Luna. But other names have been gained in steam. Watch this from Rover. This is Ginger. She also goes by Ginge, Gingy, uh, Baby Girl, Naughty Girl, Little Muffin, Sleepy Baby. <laughs> this is George. He also goes by Gorgeous George and Fat George. This is Suke. Uh, and some names that he goes by are Poop, Stinky, Handsome Boy, my handsome man, my love, and a uh, pobrecito, a poor baby. This is Olive. Um, she has some nicknames. They can all be used interchangeably. So we have the Boo Boo, the Gigi, which stands for good girl, the Boo Boo Gigi, Shmupkin, Bupkin, Bupkin Boo, Shmupkin Bupkin. And I think that might cover them all. Amazing. See how the guys acting just like the woman about dogs? They got that from the female. Guys, are, guys see dogs as tough hunting dogs, tough protection dogs around the house. That, what you just saw, is sick. It is evil. It is pure sickness. They cannot deal with human beings, so they have turned to animals. That is sick. That is evil. That is pure evil, folks. Disguising itself as good. And if you're an emotional person, you will feel good about that and you will call it good. You will be calling evil good. Those people cannot deal with human beings. They have turned to animals. I've said once, I've said a thousand times, my country's gone. The female have been allowed to take over and the gates of hell come through the woman and it, because the men are not totally following the woman and war to the man that follows the woman. War to the man that listens to the woman. Look what's happening. Men are literally carrying on over animals in the same way a woman does. And it wasn't like that before, when boys were boys and men were men. And they can care less about the destruction of the animal. It don't come that they're weakening an animal as long as they can get a knife thrill. Somebody look at that animal, they feel good about the animal, blah, blah, blah. They don't care what the condition is put in the animal. Like mother, the animal in, like mothers don't care about children anymore, 
and they don't care what condition that they're putting their children in as long as they can get the thrills that they're looking for. It's all about self. All ego people, which is angry, anger is about themselves. They have no love for no one else or nothing else. And they don't really love, they don't, not really, they don't love the animals. They love the thrill they get from the animals. They don't care that they're destroying the animal as long as they get the thrill. Satan is busy. Here is an example of that animal nature from X. Amazing. Men don't lead anymore. Whatever the woman wants to do, no matter how dumb and stupid it look or it make him look, because he has not overcome his mother, the woman is his God. And he, he got to do whatever she wants to get the thrill from her. And the woman is suffering as he is suffering. And it's like the animal is suffering as the animal owner is suffering. And, and not all, not, well, until they've been born again, women, there's not one that cares about anything but herself until she started to wake up. And there are a handful of women who are starting to wake up. I counsel with them. They attend our fellowship, women's fellowship and everything. Women's forum this Thursday night, by the way, every Thursday, Thursday night. And women knows how to make a complete fool out of men. They know how to make an A out of men. It's so easy that they hate the fact that they can do it. Women hate men that they can control. Women hate men that they can make them change the way they live to fit in with her way. And her way is wrong, and she knows it. And she's looking to that man to help her overcome her hell. But she gets the thrill of making, which is anger and hate thrill, um, uh, recreating him in her image. I want to give you a quick example of women hating men that they can control. I don't care who it is. You could be the Pope. You could be Joe Biden. It doesn't matter. If they can control you, if they can make you give up your life and live the way they want you to live, they hate you for it. Because all you're doing is going into their hell. And women are looking for a way, well, some, not all, are out of hell. They're miserable in their hell. And here you are, man. You join them in hell rather than showing them the way out of hell because you have not overcome your hell by not overcoming your mother's spirit. And they know how to act like they care, but they can give two cents about you. They love the control that they have over you. They don't love you. The caption of this video is, he thought she actually liked him. Watch this from TikTok. Regular conversation with you, and you're just treat like, it's just, it's not even the fact. It's not even the fact. So what was happening there, uh, Apparently, allegedly, this woman was talking to her boyfriend on the other end of the phone, pretending like she was so hurt because he's just not doing it the way she wanted to, whatever. I don't know the whole story. And, um, and while acting out like that, she was feminine. Somebody else was feminine. And it's on TikTok. 
she was laughing at the guy because he was, I don't, Sean, how do we know he was overreacting? We, I didn't see that. I can't hear you, Sean. So I'm going to come in and explain a bit. I didn't see the whole deal. My producer, Sean, is here. And one of the experts on the Destiny Peterson show. So is there more to the video? No. Oh, so what was the deal with that? Um, they were fight, you know, fighting, but uh, he thought she was actually upset, but she wasn't. She was just... Uh, she had him on the hook because yeah. he thought that she was upset, but really, in reality, she was just playing. She 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 was, you know, she went to her friend. Right, men, that's amazing. Huh? That's how women play men. Anything to control them, while they get a faucet of life from it. Wait till you see the next one. This is from YouTube. Petty mother cut her daughter's braids in spite of her ex. Watch this from ex. My baby said nobody did be crying. I don't care. I told you, stop playing with me. This motherfucker cut my baby hair out of here. So Look at that. That's just sad. It hurt now my wait. baby feeling. Now wait. Because you don't hurt the dad. You hurt her feelings. You hurt my baby feeling. My baby sat there for two hours. I do my own girl My baby sat there for two hours. Oh, okay. Amazing. So it would appear as though this is another sort of like custody situation. Right. Where he's dropping the his daughter off with her with her mom. And um it look it appears as though he got the daughter braids while they were out. And then when he got back with the mom, she cut the braids off. Of the kid. <laughs> and the baby crying. He's like, I don't care. I don't care if she cry. Yeah. But same with that, the, the one we played yesterday and, and last week, the, the guy who, who's trying to calm his son down in the, in the car, and he's like, my mom makes me so angry. Oh, yeah. You know, if it is, a, right. if it is you know, a custody situation like that, and he has to give the kid back to, because of what the court says, like he has to give the kid back to the mom for right. a week or something, he only gets him on weekends. It's like he only has a short period of time to try to encourage the kid to, to overcome. I mean, also the kid's only four or five. But. Right. It's hard for kids to deal with the hell of the mother. They need the father there to protect them. I thought it was so interesting the other boy said, I can't handle her. I can't deal with her. Something like that. I almost right? want to say it's impossible for the kid to deal, with, to deal with the no, hell of the mother that's why without, without the, the dad there. Yeah. Like it's it's impossible. Impossible, absolutely, man. You know, what and then once you know, once the kid believes the the lie that you know his mother is fit to lead and she's she's right and she can do no wrong and it's me that's wrong. Once the kid believes that growing up, he'll believe all sorts of different lies. Yeah. He'll go out into the world and believe this, that, yeah, the other right. thing about. Whatever's going on, he'll just believe stuff. He believe that racism is this. Yeah. <laughs> Once you believe the lie, you can't go back. Um, what do you think about the first story about these human beings father to the nature of animals? Um, I've been guilty of that. We we had dogs growing up, you know. And you treated them like that? To a certain extent, not not maybe that extreme. But I'm no better than them. I, I, I did that. Really? Yeah. Your father knew about that? Yes. I had talked to him. <laughs> <laughs> he he was not like that. I, I can't imagine no, him being that He way. was not like that. Uh, that's me. He, I was like, he was like, it's just a dog. <laughs> right. It's just a dog. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Uh, Layla. Rest in peace, Layla. Evidently. We love you. 888 Jesse. Back in a moment. Now, I totally disagree with the way things are going, but you can't be angry. 
because that's what the enemy wants. He wants to control you. They do things to make you mad so they can control you. It's like being married. And the wife would do things to make you mad or she would do things to make you feel good. And men do that to women too when they want something from the woman, especially sex. They'll make her feel good or they'll make her angry. And the woman's gonna have to say, you don't wanna be angry. You wanna speak up, you wanna disagree with what's going on, it's wrong, but do not be angry. Then you won't have fear, you won't have doubt, you won't have worries, you'll be able to see. But you gotta stay away from anger. That's why you must forgive your mothers and your fathers so that you can overcome the spirit of anger. It's a spirit and it's wicked. Nothing good in anger because it has no love, bro. You need love to defeat evil. And love is not a weakness. It's a strength. It's from God. It's his nature. Okay, folks, welcome back. The um, Women's Forum this Thursday night, it is the third Thursday night of the month. So every third Thursday night of the month, Women's Forum at 7 p.m. So come on down. This is going to be a Tuesday. I have a good feeling about this one because we are already dealing with some issues. Uh, and at 9 a.m. this morning, the hatecreport.com from 9 to 11 a.m. Pacific time, hate is back. Hake is back from 9 to 11 a.m. Pacific time. And at 11 a.m., Joel Friday TV, he black. Joel Friday TV. And at 12 noon, the American Anchor Baby. The American Anchor Baby. For personalized shout at 12 noon, all right? For personalized shout outs, birthday, whatever the occasion is, Go to Cameo, and I'll do them myself for you. Cameo.com slash Jesse Lee Peterson. Cameo, C-A-M-E-O, dot com slash Jesse Lee Peterson. And donate. Go to RebuildingTheMan.com. We need your support. RebuildingTheMan.com slash store. We have merch there and everything. Um, before I go to the call, you wanted to make a point about. Right. Yeah, I mean, during during uh, the break just now, you were saying how, you know, we can't be playing around with the devil like that. Right. We can't just be playing around. It's um, spiritual battle is more serious than we than we think it is. And Satan got human beings believing that all this stuff they're doing with animals and the way they treat one another and all this stuff is cute. But he keep you in hell. That's deception. He wants you to think it's cute. Right. And we had a we had a call caller. I don't know a week or two ago. And he was talking about how he hasn't forgiven his mom yet. And you were saying, well, what did she do wrong? And he was sort of dancing around it like, oh, well, she was a little impatient with me. Um, oh, yeah, she yeah. could have been better. Yeah. And he was like, you know, but it, it sounds worse than it is. Than it is. You know, <laughs> him saying, oh, she, she was impatient. Like, it sounds worse than it is. No, it and is it, worse. It's, it's worse than it sounds. It destroys the soul. Yeah, it's it's good versus yeah. evil. It's worse than it sounds. Like yeah. you, you you might think, oh, it's just impatience. It's just imposing your will. It's no big deal. But it's 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 that's it. That's yeah. the, that's the spiritual battle. It's worse than it than it sounds. It doesn't sound that, worse than it that's is. That's a really good point. There was a young lady at the fellowship Sunday for the first time. God bless her soul, and. She at the at the end of the meeting, she and I and her friend were talking, and she said, "Y'all didn't talk about the love of Jesus. Yeah, we need to be talking about the love of Jesus. I want to hear that. Y'all talking about the <laughs> devil. Yeah, me and Joel were talking about that yesterday on Hicks show. Joel and I. Yeah. <laughs> potato, potato. <laughs> and I was and I was talking. I was made a point about it. somebody oh, go, ahead, go get the phone out there, folks. Don't worry, they'll be right with you. Go ahead. And um. 
we were talking about how I made a point about animals and about dogs because the guy who comes to church and he brings his seeing eye dog. Right. Oh, yeah. His guide dog. Yeah. And sometimes I, I stare at the dog during church and I'm thinking, like, what is the dog thinking, you know? <laughs> and I, I realized that dogs definitely believe their own thoughts, you know? Yeah. Okay. A dog, you know how a dog will just chill in one spot for a really long time? Right. And it, it appears as though it might be like in a meditative state, you know, like he's doing the <laughs> silent prayer for three hours. But really, you know that that dog is thinking like, you know, what was that noise? What am I having for dinner? And he right. thinks that that voice in his head is, is yeah. him or her. That's a good point. Absolutely, man. Like the dog definitely thinks that that voice in his head is him. Just like human beings in a fallen state, unconscious state. They right. think that it, the thoughts of theirs right. and the feelings of them <laughs> and all kind of stuff. And Joel asked, uh, ask. What is ask. It? He said, well, is it possible for dogs or animals at any point to overcome that? To, no. To, to look at it. <laughs> They're locked in. They're locked in. Yeah, they were created that way. Right. Without, yeah. And he, he said something very interesting about dogs and animals before the fall. Who? Joel. Before Adam and Eve. Like, you know. <laughs> and what he, he he'd have to come in and explain it. But he, he said something about before the fall, did they have dogs? No, like, what were animals like before? Were they, were they the same as animals after, after the fall? Yeah. They were put on earth for men. For people. We have dominion over the animals. Right. Um, and so the lady, Sunny, was saying, well, what is... Um, she said, I want to hear more about Jesus. Yeah, I want to hear about Jesus. Jesus. Love I want to hear about love. Well, Y'all talking about the devil. But one of the guys made a statement later. He said, well, our battle is with the devil. It's not with Jesus. And I'm like, that is such a good point. Yeah, it is. Our battle is with Satan. Man, I was watching highlights from uh, The Chosen last night. Nice. Oh, so good. Are they, uh, did they make new ones on this? I, I, I only saw the first season, Oh. but I was just watching short short clips oh, okay. last night. Yeah. And, um, man, great, great highlights. Amazing. What a mess. That's amazing to me, that human being... Human beings are going totally toward the animal nature. And there's nothing in the animal nature but hell. That's like mind-blowing me. Yeah. And it's the woman that's leading them down into the animal nature. Misery loves company. Hell la uh, hell. Right. Come on, man! Misery loves company. When you feel like you're in that animal nature, you want something next to you that also is not that yeah. animal nature. What a mess. Satan is busy. Thank you, Shy. You're welcome. Amazing. Who, um, I forgot who I told the call back. Okay. Amazing. Let me go to Jordan, a first time caller out of uh, Canada. Jordan, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Oh, it's Gordon, actually. Oh, Gordon. Sorry about that. Yeah. It's right. That's what he has here. Thank you. All right. I have a question for you, a biblical question. Okay. It concerns uh, Adam and Eve. When, in the Bible, when you read Genesis and you read the first chapter, it says God created everything in six days in the world, and he rested on the seventh. Then in the second chapter, he says that he created the Garden of Eden. When I first opened up my Bible, my Bible, my spiritual guide told me that these two things were different, the one in the world and the one in Garden of Eden. Now, when the serpent tempted the Eve and beguiled her, God, when he cursed that serpent, he, ser he cursed it as a serpent. At no time did he call that serpent a devil, or in the Bible anywhere else a devil. He called it a serpent, and he cursed it as a serpent. And he said, and when he threw Adam and Eve out, he says, "Lest they become like us, meaning the other hosts of heaven that were in the Garden of Eden." He threw them out, and he threw the serpent out as a serpent to the ground. Why do people think that this is Satan, when God makes no reference to him being Satan? He talks to him as a serpent. 
But I have no idea because I don't even understand what you're saying. The, the who, Garden who of Eden. Say, and when, who did you say confirmed that for you? My spiritual guide. Who is your, when I first who Bible, is your, my Bible, my guardian angel. Who is your spiritual guide? To, yes. Who is your spiritual guide? Well, I have, everybody has a guardian angel. And when I first started reading my Bible, I remember specifically, just as clear as a bell, this angel pointed at this in the second chapter and told me that the Garden of Eden was separate from what man was when he was created and put in the world. So you believe that a Garden of Angel told you that? Yes. And I've seen an angel. You saw an angel? Yeah, an angel came to me and visited me. I got to find me an angel. And well, everybody, everybody that talks about angels, they say, oh, it's this loving, great experience and, and how wonderful it was and how peaceful they felt. When I, an angel came to me, I was terrified. I felt <laughs> nothing but fear and terror. And every man in the Bible... So prophet, why would you believe what that angel told you if you were terrified? It was just when I was reading my Bible. It, it pointed out this specifically. Well, to why me. would you believe an evil angel? Well, this wasn't an evil angel. You said it was terrifying. Yes, but every prophet and every man in the Bible, even even Mary, the mother of Jesus, when an angel appeared to them, they fell on their face in fear and terror. Everybody and, did. And that was because the angel was terrifying. God is terrifying. God is terrifying? God is terrifying. What do you mean by that? I mean, God scares the crap out of me. Uh, you Doesn't see, he scare you? You seen God? Yes. And I what seen did... an angel. I couldn't look upon it because it was the light that was shining from it was so bright I couldn't look at it. All right. Uh, Jordan, thank you for your call. I'm... terror. Man, thank you, buddy. I appreciate that. 888-7753. Seven seven three. What the? Let me go to Andres out of North. There's one line open. Eight 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 seven seven five three seven seven three. Let me go to Andres out of North Carolina. Andres, welcome to the show. You're on the air. What's going on, Jason? What's all, up? All is well, man. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm, I'm well, man. What, what, what that man was talking about? Man. I have no idea. I got to find uh, me an angel. <laughs> I'm like, dude, what? But, okay, anyway. I got to uh, find I, I, me an angel. Yeah, he he went off. He he had me for a minute, but when he started, I just zoned him out after a while. Like, okay, bro. But uh, what, what's going on, man? All this way. Yeah, I actually have a legit question. Okay. Uh. How do you know you you uh you oftentimes always express <coughs> women in ways that let men know to uh, be cautious when dealing with them how evil conniving and all these things they can't be right uh, even with even with dating you know you always want to be alert right and uh, to your woman how do you know when this woman is the right one I, I, you know, after dating, and uh, you done, quote-unquote, put her through so many tests. She done, she done <laughs> jumped every hoop. She done, uh, she done erased all doubt. I'm talking about, she, I, done, I done emptied a clip on this one, man, and I'm just like, okay. <laughs> so how do you know when the one is right? When you don't need her and when you don't want anything from her, when you're not trying to get anything from her. Can you can you uh I guess break that down just a tad for me, just just a little bit? When you're not looking for love from her, because she has no love, when you have no expectation from her, when you can <laughs> live with her or without her, then you shall know. Okay. Okay. When you um, when you're not looking for anything. Like then this transcends past sex, right? Like this, this, this <laughs> goes far beyond. No, no, no. I'm, I'm serious. It, like, like, cause there's no oversexing going on. I, 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 and I see the value in that. 
uh, you know, she she does do her um, her womanly, I guess, duties. She understands it. Uh, actually, this is how she was raised. She's not an American woman. You know, she's a a, 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 a Haitian woman. So, oh my I, God, I run! Uh, please talk to me. There you go. This is what I want to talk to. <laughs> All right. Uh, this 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 is why I want to talk right up. Um. I'm so playing. please elaborate on that. No, I was just joking. So, oh, oh, so, oh. so if I'm understanding you right, Andres, you found a new woman, right? Yes. And she has no children, never been married or anything. No. There we uh, go. Good. Are you saying uh, that? No, ch- no children married before. She been married before? Mm-hmm. Walk away. Okay. 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 And you say, you say walk away. I right, know. Uh, you never been married before, right? No, sir. I have not. But uh, you know, I. I Why I would you want to get involved with another man's wife? She been married before. Okay. No, I'm asking. And, and, and the reason. Okay. Uh, and, uh, so the reason why is because uh, I never uh, understood marriage, and I had little respect for it because I grew up not seeing it. Right. So that's that's why, um, and. We had this conversation before, and I asked her, uh, why did you not honor your marriage? And she told me that she didn't have the patience to assess. She was, she did it wrong. Uh, she was young. She snuck and got married. You know, so it's kind of sort of the same mistakes I made uh, with having kids. But I became aware. And I'm seeing that she became aware, but again, I'm 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 just keeping an open mind. This is the, this is my thought process here. You know, uh, I'm not saying that I'm about to jump in and marry her or do anything like this, but I I am seeing, I am understanding of how she uh got into this situation there. You understand? So I'm not charging her to it harshly, but I because I understand uh, the ignorance with, with how how. She could have been ignorant right. to being married because I was ignorant yeah. to the importance of marriage. So if I can see it in myself, I can I can understand her as well. You know, you know what I mean? I do. Okay. But that doesn't mean you're supposed to marry her. She might okay. not be working on herself to overcome the hell that's in her. Okay. How do you know she's not pretending to be what you want her to be? So that, that's, a, that's, that's another one. Like, so... Uh, first of all, let me just paint a picture. Uh, I ain't green to women. Right. Um, I done been around the block more than five times. So, uh, and, and on top of that, like I said before, it was, I, I done gave her a Navy SEALs obstacle course to try to, and, and I mean, it sounds manipulative. But what do you it, mean by like that? A, what, what have you done? Meaning. Meaning a vetting process. Like, what do you mean? I, Give me an example. Like, uh, would you stop, you know, these some of the things like, would you stop your job to, um, you know, to be a woman of the house? Okay, you said you would do it? Okay, do it. And, like, like just a, it's, it's kind of hard to explain, you know, but it's like she follows along. She has overcame all types of tough times, uh, all type of crazy decisions that I've made, and she has not changed. Um, do she flare up and have womanly uh, tendencies? Absolutely. But when I calm them down, she calms it down. So, you, uh, you know, that's that womanly side that is almost like you're trying to tell a dog not to bark. A woman gonna woman. But... Uh, this female has been consistent since I started dating her, and it's going on two years. Now, I know there's not a lot of time, but there is enough time to where a mask can crack. And I, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a silly guy. I, I can see. Um, so, again, that's why I'm calling and trying to get more, more, more wisdom from someone who has been here. Let me uh, ask. Much why? Okay. Why did you, when you meet a woman, you're not supposed to let her know you're watching her, because women are so cunning, 
if you tell them, well, will you be a, are you willing to stay home again? We ask them, are you willing to stay home and be a wife, a mother? Will you do this and that? When they, uh, when, when you tell them what you're expecting, they're going to pretend to be that way uh, until they get you and everything will change. But you, okay. y- you should quietly, if you're dating, right, you should just quietly be yourself, be yourself. And then you, with her not knowing you're being yourself, you will be able to see the real her because she wouldn't know where you're coming from. Okay. So you're not you know, supposed uh, to put all your cards on the table right away. Okay. Uh, in response, um, I I don't think now I don't think that I overtly did that. I did it in a more subtle way, you know, to to kind of keep her antennas low to try to get some authenticity out of this whole thing. Um, and again, uh, cream rises to the top, and you know, she, she overcame. And, and, and again, just, uh, I'm not a green dude again. Is she working on I'm herself? Not. Absolutely. She would have forgave her parents and stuff? Yes. She did? Did she and do it because she, you she told her a, to or because she saw she needed to? She First of all, she saw that she needed to, and she has a father. Um, she speak highly on, on her father. Now, this is a drawback that I see. She has an overbearing mother, but her mother is up in age, and she still has a tie to her mother. She has a tie to her mother because her mother is up in she has a, she her mother is up in uh, age. She has a very uh she has an older mother. I think she's like in her seventy. You know what I mean? So she has yeah. that tie, that fear of her mother. Uh, being alone. Being what? Alone. Where's like the father? Alone. Be, be, the the uh, the father. They both. The father is um uh, married to another woman. They oh, okay. they they. Yes, yes. So you know, because of time, your question for me is what? I guess. Uh, I guess. I mean, I asked when uh, when we started. How do you know that? Uh, this woman is the right one. You answered it. I think we just got down into the weeds of it. You, you pretty much answered it when you know that you don't need her. Right. Is, yeah. you, is she? Are you thinking of marrying her or something? Uh. Yes. I am. And, and, and uh, why? I, um. Because just yes, man, I, I I think I think that uh, she uh, proved herself. But, but what about no. your young... Ch- well, she have not proved herself. it takes take a lifetime to prove yeah. yourself in a marriage. Okay. Because living with you and dating you is going to be in two different stories. And you living with... Uh, I mean, I mean, dating you and living with her, or she dating you and living with you, totally different. Everything going to change once you start living together. Okay. Uh, what about your young children? Um... Hold they on. cling to it. Can you okay. hold on? Yes. 888-7753-773. Quick break. Hake is coming in with the hate news, not the fake news. I'll be back in a moment. So, here's what I recommend. I invite you to download my silent prayer. <laughs> Um, I know some people have called in and they wonder if the silent prayer is working. And I just want to take a second and, and to tell them that it works. You just have to stick with it. Yeah. Um, that's the first thing I started doing before I even forgave my parents. And I was so depressed and suicidal at some times that I, I just would have to stop in the middle of my job or whatever I was doing and go into the silent prayer. And it, it really does help, like... I don't have those anymore. Amazing. Um, you haven't seen anything yet. Doubt every thought. Bring every thought into captivity. Just let them all pass. Don't judge them. You haven't seen anything. It gets better and better and better and easier, easier, easier. So my gift to you, no charge, at rebuildingtheman.com slash church.
the Supreme Court blocked Texas from stopping illegals. Wow. So-called Supreme Court. Haiti's gang takeover. UN's all busybodying, saying that some of them might start starving. It's a mess over there in that godless, seemingly, country. An Israel-Palestine war drama. Are Gazans going to be starving, too? This is the end of hour one of the Jesse Lee Peterson Show. It is Country and Western Tuesday, a uh, t- March 19th, A.D., 2024. Stay tuned for hour two. JLP will be right back to your calls. Hang tight, callers. Appreciate you. There is one line open. You can call in right now. During hake news, not fake news, invasion in Texas. The Supreme Court is allowing it. Commie nonsense network. CNN reports the so-called Supreme Court Monday, yesterday, indefinitely blocked Texas from enforcing a controversial, meaning on the dire- in the direction of being reasonable, law that allows would have allowed state officials to arrest and detain people whom they suspect of entering the United States illegally, or perhaps even remaining illegally, because you can overstay your visa and then become an illegal that way. Uh, SB4, Senate Bill 4, signed into law by Texas Republican Governor Greg Abbott, in December, raised concerns among immigration advocates who are supporting the destruction of the country of increased racial profiling, as well as detentions and attempted deportations by state authorities in Texas, where Latinos represent 40 percent of the population. What a mess. Demographics is destiny. Shortly after the order was announced Monday, Greg Abbott issued a response saying Texas will continue utilizing every tool and strategy to respond to this Biden-made border crisis. It's actually Obama. (laughs) And many uh, rhinos and Democrats before and since. What a mess. Speaking of mess, Haiti madness, the far-left female run outlet The Skim reports that Haiti is growing, facing a growing crisis. Haiti has struggled with economic instability and political unrest for over a decade following the 2010 earthquake that killed at least... 220,000 people, almost a quarter million, approaching that anyway. Efforts to rebuild have been stifled. Haitian politicians and gangs fighting to control aid money. They're sending aid money and they're fighting over control over it. Maybe we should cut off the aid money. The country's turmoil took a turn in 2021 when Haiti's democratically elected president was assassinated. Wow, remember that? I forgot about that. Since then, Prime Minister Ariel Henry has struggled to control the country and has resigned amid escalating gang violence. The evil UN, United Nations, so-called, says gangs kidnapped, killed, or injured more than 8,400 people in 2023. What a mess. I wonder what the population is. Earlier this month, gangs raided Haiti's two main prisons, releasing nearly 4,000 prisoners. Sounds like America, huh? The evil UN says... Gangs now control about 80% of Haiti's capital, Port-au-Prince. Uh, they've attacked the city's government buildings and an international airport. The violence has forced some aid groups to stop operating in Haiti, prompting concerns of widespread hunger. Uh, authorities in Haiti put a curfew in place, declared a state of emergency. In the meantime, joke of a secretary of state in the United States, Antony Blinken is involved in talks to help from a transitional council that will lead Haiti in the interim, that's the as the U.S. is working to get Americans out of Haiti. So-called Americans are stuck in Haiti. Governor Ron DeSantis, Republican from Florida, reportedly delayed law enforcement off the coast. Deployed law enforcement, whew, not delayed, off the coast of Florida amid concerns that Haiti's instability could lead to a surge of so-called migrants, illegals, into the state. One situation in the situation in Haiti is deteriorating fast. So-called world leaders trying to bring order back in. <sighs> Others warn that people in Haiti are running out of time amid escalating violence and threats of starvation. The UN warns that 4 million people in Haiti face acute food insecurity, those busybodies in the UN. And part of it is because they tried to help them, and now they're fighting over it. What a mess. Speaking of uh, starvation, I'll tell you about the Israel-Palestine war drama in the next hour. But now back to the Jesse Lee Peterson Show, Hour 2. Somewhere in the world today, men and 
got to stand up strong Take the truth about themselves To understand what went wrong I know we can find a way I know we can find a way I know we can find a way To stand up Stand up Stand up Uniting the races with truth Instead of dividing them with lies, we're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Welcome to the second hour of the show already. You can get involved by calling 888-773-5373, 888-77-JESSE. My biblical question for this week Do you have morals and values? If so, where did you find them? Do you have morals and values? If so, where did you find them? Isn't that an amazing question? We have every way that you can watch and support the show listed on jessaleepeterson.com slash show. jessaleepeterson.com slash show. If you're out and about, doing whatever you're doing, working out or whatever, you can't sit and watch the show right now, you can listen to the show by calling the listen line on Talk Stream Live at 641-793-1500. That's 641-793-1500. And um, you can podcast the show later, but you can be listening live on your iPhone or iPad while you're doing whatever you're doing. Follow us on social media, JLP Talk on X, JLP Talk on X, and Jesse Lee Peterson on Instagram. JLP Talk on X and Jesse Lee Peterson on Instagram. To donate and have your comments read out loud, go to buymeacoffee.com slash JLP Talk, buymeacoffee.com, slash JLP Talk, or RebuildingTheMan.com. RebuildingTheMan.com. It's Tuesday. It's the second hour of the show today. It is Country and Western Tuesday. Bring back, bring back, oh, bring back my country to me. Bring back, bring back, bring back my country to What me. dog? <laughs> Who let the dogs out? Woo. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. I want to go back to Andres, and Andres is dating, and he met this woman, and he just kind of want to talk about what, to look for and blah, 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 stuff like that. Andres. Yes, sir. Just before we went to break, I asked you about your your young kids. Why would you bring someone between you and your kids at this point? Well, uh, it's already a disconnect between myself and my kids. And uh, I'm, I'm trying to, uh, I, I guess, Get be a a certain example to my kids whenever they do. Uh, they may not respect me as a father, but uh, when they do look at me as a man, when they become men, they can have uh, somewhat of an example that they can identify with because I understand how they can be for young children growing up. Uh, so I'm really trying to polish up myself uh because i know how i was in my 20s running rampant Uh, that's how i ended up with three kids by three women um uh, i'm 30 uh now you know i look at life through a different lens Uh, a lot of that is a credit to you 
um, and and uh, the direction that you pointed me back to, a lot of positive things has been happening in my life. Uh, I just bought my first business. Uh, I just got accepted into flight school. You know, nice. a lot of great things are happening. So um, but why would you bring this woman between you and your children? Because I, uh, there's already a disconnect between myself and my children. What do you mean? There's all, already a disconnect. All three of them? They're, they're, yeah, well, except for one. Except for one, and that's my last one. It's already a disconnect. Their mothers are already in a way. So, I mean, what impact would this have other than uh, this woman she nurtures my kids. She nurtures my kids. My kids are uh, responsive to this to this woman. All of them. I have a ten year old. He goes home and he he speaks highly of this woman. Uh, I have my two year old and my one year old has been with her since he uh, been around her uh, since he was three weeks. So I mean, you know, I would I would, I would kind of give some pushback on her coming in between. Right. Uh, because, yeah, you know, I don't I don't think that's the case. However, I do understand what you're saying. But it's already a disconnect between myself and my kids. You know, it, it's not the ideal uh, situation here. So are you saying that when you're with your children, um, so you, are, are you with all three of them at times? Uh, yes, absolutely. And so uh, when uh, you're yes. with them, are, you cl- are they close to you? Are you close to them? My 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 kids. Uh huh. We all. Well, one of all together. Oh yeah, they they all stay. Uh, <laughs> sometimes they all two all stay in the same location. One all stay in Mississippi. Right, and but they yeah. all are but, with you at times. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And just before the break, you said they cleave to this woman. Cling, uh, for the lack of a better term, cling to her, but meaning they are responsive to her. You know, they're but, not clean. Like, oh, I, okay. Do what you want, of course, but I recommend mm-hmm. you don't want your kids to clean to another woman. You want them to clean to you because they're already okay. catching hell with their mothers. Okay. And so they need to draw closer and closer to the father. And if you bring, do what you want again, but if you bring oh, yeah. another woman between you and them while they're small, they may cleave to her, but they're still going to be yearning for you. Okay. Understandable. Okay. Because they need to have a father's love, not a mother's love. Uh, they need the father's love. So at least when they're with you, they can, and as they're getting older, they can compare the father's love with that mother's love. And when you're mm-hmm. not around, your love will protect them even when, because they would know this is, this is not love. My dad is not like this. It's not the, and they have, even as little kids, they have something to compare it with. Okay. They don't need to go from one mama to another mama to get mama's love. I got you. That makes sense? Absolutely. Every, yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. yes. And also, real life, in real life, because life is supposed to happen on its own, we are not supposed to make life happen. When we try to make life happen, it's going to always go wrong. It cannot go right. And so I would recommend do it to her, but I would recommend that you continue to seek the Father and only Him and nothing or no one else. And your life is just going to naturally work for itself. And if it meant for you to get married, it will happen naturally and there will be no questions about it. Okay, sir. Okay. Are you still doing the silent prayer every morning and night? Yes, sir. I am. Well, stay with that. Stay present. And be careful that you don't allow the enemy, which is the devil, to to throw you off course. Okay. And so for now, if you want to continue to date this woman, just continue to date her. But don't let her know what you are thinking and looking for. Just watch her. Be yourself so she can be herself and you will see the real deal. All right, that 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 that's that's valid. All right, so uh, appreciate y'all. Sorry, sorry, I took up so much time. No man. problem, man. I've been I've been pondering on for a while. Right on. And um, so 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 I appreciate it. Thank uh, you. All right, buddy. Call me again. Right. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. 
888-7753-773. There's one line open. Super chat. Super chat. Super, super. Super chats. Elizabeth Marie bought a coffee. You the man, Jesse. Smiley face with hearts fl- floating around her face. Emoji. Who said that? Elizabeth Marie. Thank you, Elizabeth Marie. Amazing. Appreciate it. Stefan donated on Cash App. No message. Thank you. Thank you. That's to Bond JLP on Cash App. And on buymeacoffee.com slash JLP Talk. Soul Conscious bought five. Jesse. Jesus said on the cross, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Then see how bad the world is treating Trump, we see. It's pretty clear now that the world hates the light. Do we all have to carry the cross when we are truly born again? Do we have to carry the cross when we are truly... I don't understand the question. Okay. Do you? Um, the Bible talks about picking up your cross daily and following Jesus. All right. So... I don't understand the question, so I can't respond. Maybe you can make it a little clearer. Thank you. No Mo Thoughts bought a coffee. I have a question regarding military and fighting in a war. My country has similar military service duty for citizens as Israel has, you know, compulsory. Should I take back my vow of armed service in order to avoid the chance of ending up in combat? <laughs> I've been sitting this thought in this thought for a while now, and it's not clear to me. Are they to my uh Are they talking about Israel military or American military? No Mo Thoughts is in a country, doesn't say that which country. Oh, they are in a country. Yeah, similar uh, mandatory military service, I guess, as Israel. Meaning that they have to go to the military? Pretty much. Oh, they're required to? Yeah. Oh, and so the question is what? Should I take back my vow of armed service in order to avoid the chance of ending up in combat? Been thinning, sitting on this thought for a while now, and it's not clear to me. It says Me- no more thoughts. Meaning that should they go or not? I guess so, yeah. But if it's required, you have to go, right? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, in Israel, they have, like, some of the Orthodox don't have to, I guess. Because they, I don't know. Somebody doesn't have to in Israel. There's some type of religion exclusion. That uh, you don't have to. Because I know that in Israel, everybody has to go. Almost everybody. Almost everybody. Yeah. I mean, I don't know because I don't know where you are, your rules. You see what's best and you do what's best for you, the right thing. So I don't know. I have no idea. But thank you. AFS Luke bought a coffee. What's the status on getting Donald Trump and others on the fallen state? Really looking forward to having a white man on the show again. It's been ages since you had him on. <laughs> we have white people on the fallen state. And, it's been ages, he says. Oh. Soon, I hope. <laughs> I don't know. You did have that one white man who supports abortion. We just had a white man on. Abortion supporting the, the guy. The Bible man. The Bible abortion man. Right. <laughs> he white. What? Uh, but thank you for the suggestion. Yeah. Uh, Sho Sugino bought three coffees. Jesse should African Americans today pay reparations to the families of the soldiers who died in the Civil War, freeing them? No such thing as African Americans. Should they pay reparations? The black Americans then pay reparations, I guess he's asking? For freeing them? To the uh, families of soldiers who died in the Civil War to free them? That's a good, I hadn't thought of that. That's a good idea. If, if the blacks feel like they can get murdered for nothing, then at least the people who save them from hell should get money. Death in war is worse than slavery, that, I think. That's right. That sounds good to me. I like that. C on C bought a coffee. Thank you for the cameo. You did it so fast. I am so excited. Thank you for your advice. You're welcome, C on. Stay with it. Stay with it. Stay with it. Thank you. Cameo.com slash If you want a cameo, no matter what, birthdays, encouragement, weddings, funerals, you can go to C-A-M-E-O dot com slash Jesse Lee Peterson. I'll do that myself. Nice. Valerie bought a coffee. Sean, what the? <laughs> Amazing. S-E-A-N for Sean, the producer. <laughs> thank FYI. you. What the? Uh, C on C. Sean said, thank you. Another coffee. <laughs> Another coffee from C on C. Hank Lazy. Hank, you fired. <laughs> Why did you say that? Maybe because I skipped 
work a couple of days there for oh. jury duty. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Thanks, you see, uh, for firing him. Nice. And shout out to Aries One for the diamonds, as always, and Severio Jones Diamond. No message. Thank you guys for the support. And thanks, guys. I do believe that that is all. Oh, no. Woozy bought a rumble rant. As my father has become more beta in his old age, his dogs have two. They're the most pitiful, anxious, codependent animals you've ever seen. The worst part is I think he prefers them that way. Amazing. Terrible. It's really, really, really bad what human beings are doing to the animals. They have destroyed other human beings, and now they're destroying the animals. It's not good, but I understand. You're in that father state, you think what you're doing is right, but you will live to regret it. Amazing. Thank and, you. And now that's all for now. Thanks, guys. Thank you all. I appreciate it. Amazing. Nice shirt. Thank you. This is Beware of the Children of the Lies from the Fallen State Teespring store. Nice. Rebuildingtheman.com slash stores. Amazing. Let me real quickly show you uh, another example of the deception of human nature. You know, God said that God said we need a new nature. We must be born again of a new nature. He changes your heart. And then when that happens, you can see that he's with you. And you allow him to destroy their old ego nature. And then what appears is his nature, which is love. It's pure love. And it's love that is not based on where someone loves you back. You, you don't want anything from anyone because you have perfect peace, you have love. And you got human nature is of evil. And if you look into the world right now, you see hell on earth. And that hell on earth is coming through human beings. The uh, evil make a home in human nature, in human beings. And human beings are all about themselves. Not one human being with an ego is about anyone else but themselves. They lie and tell you that they uh, care about others. I feed the hunger, I do this. But even feeding the hunger is about themselves. They get a thrill out of feeding the hunger or hungry. And what's happening with um, the great white hope, Donald Trump, is a big picture of what every human being is joined to, themselves and others. Because you may look at Donald Trump and see the hell that he has to deal with that's coming out of other people, and you'll think, I would never do that. I'm not. But if you look at your own life, you're doing it to others. And it's been done to you. That's why I encourage you to keep a little space between you and the great white hope so you can see what's going on. I want you to hear what they are now saying about Donald Trump. Watch this from NBC. Former President Donald Trump vowed at a rally that there would be a bloodbath if he's not reelected in November. Trump says there will be a bloodbath. So they, they told you that because they're trying to deceive you in order to get what they want. And they don't care about deceiving you. They don't care about you, period. And when you hear the word bloodbath, that's supposed to make you freak out and overreact and vote for them. Because if you don't stay calm, you're going to believe them. You're not going to realize that they're deceiving you because they want you to vote for them. They want you to vote for them. And they give you fear. They give you fear. They keep you in fear. They got you. It's like a marriage. 
if the man of the woman can keep you in fear, fear of losing them, fear of getting beaten, fear of whatever, they got you. Fear is not of God. Anyone that has fear is evil. Anyone that has fear has anger. You must overcome fear so you can stop overreacting to the devil inside of you and the devil outside of you, inside of others. Hell on earth inside of human beings. What a mess, huh? So you heard what they say about the bloodbath, right? Right? And according to NBC and MSNBC, the Biden campaign responded by criticizing the former president's threat of political violence. Michael Taylor, communication director for the Biden-Harris campaign, joined Jen Psaki to discuss Donald Trump's, Donald Trump's warning. Watch this from MSNBC and N MSNBC and CNN. What I heard was a continuation of the same rhetoric, the same endorsement of political violence that we've seen from Donald Trump for years, as you pointed out. It goes even farther back, right? This is the same guy who, after Nazis marched on Charlottesville and killed a woman, said there were very fine people on both sides. This embrace of political violence, this dehumanizing language, this is what Donald Trump has been preaching for years. Donald Trump has a history of this dark, violent, dangerous rhetoric. And we already saw the result of what happens when he uses that rhetoric. His cult MAGA supporters and followers totally know exactly what he was telling them. After Trump says things like, it's going to be a bloodbath if I lose. That is dangerous, it's irresponsible, and he should not get away with it. They pretend to be talking about the great white hope, Donald Trump, but they're talking about themselves. They really are talking about themselves. And you heard how they like, oh, bloodbath. His cult followers know exactly what he means. They're lying to you, but they're talking about themselves. What it has it been like for, uh, for the, this country over the last four years or so, however long this idiot been in the White House? Nothing but hell. Nothing good has come from this administration, not zero, but everything bad, illegal aliens, open borders, violence and crime and uh, uh, drugs and the, the, uh, a division between the race and stuff. They take away the police, no police. And now people are breaking in everywhere and they're telling you, oh, you need to put up something else on your house. Not the cops. They're talking about themselves. Now, you heard them talking about, oh, that's awful. Right, uh, Bloodbath. They know exactly what Donald Trump means, right, they say, that his father does. Well, you heard the lie. Here's what Donald Trump actually said. Watch this from C-SPAN. Mexico has taken over a period of 30 years 34% of the automobile manufacturing business in our country, think of it, went to Mexico. China now is building a couple of massive plants where they're going to build the cars in Mexico and think, they think, that they're going to sell those cars into the United States with no tax at the border. We're going to put a 100% tariff on every single car that comes across the line, and you're not going to be able to sell those cars. If I get elected, now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole. That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. But they're not going to sell those cars. They're building massive factories. You talk about cars. And bloodbath is a political term. He's talking about cars. But they're trying to deceive you. And this is going to get worse between now and November because these people are losing, it appears. And they want you in fear. And all you're going to hear now for the rest of the term is fear. And if you have anger, they will succeed. They will succeed. He was talking about cars in China. 
And apparently he's right about that. According to carscoops.com, Mexico is China's back door into the U.S. market. Imported Chinese brands are already big in Mexico, but building cars there will open up tax-free access to the U.S. and Canada. But the deceivers, all they care about is standing government and controlling you because they want more money and power, perceived power. And it's not uncommon to use that word. I suggest you overcome fear by overcoming anger, overcome anger, overcome fear. But it's up to you. This is hell on earth. Hell on earth. And everyone else is allowed to use that word. Watch this compilation. Politico.com reports tonight on the, quote, bloodbath at the RNC. Headlines calling it a, quote, bloodbath. Yeah, bloodbath. Not only is it going to be a bloodbath, but after they leave New Hampshire, it's a bloodbath on her home turf. That's Stop really it. tough. Trump has left a lot of corpses in his wake. I mean, we yeah. can count the bodies as part Stop of the, quote, it. MAGA drive to take over Maricopa. Amazing. I don't know what's going on there. But hopefully we can get it right and play it. I do want you to hear that. Oh, you made it fast on purpose? Why? Are the people going to be able to understand what they're saying? Oh, okay. Sean, my producer's telling me that you're here that he made it that way on purpose because there were so many of them. So let's be here, Sean. I'm sorry. at the RNC. Headlines calling it a, quote, bloodbath. Yeah, bloodbath. Not only is it going to be a bloodbath, but after they leave New Hampshire, it's a bloodbath on her home turf. That's really tough. Trump has left a lot of corpses in his wake. I mean, we can count the bodies as part of the, quote, MAGA drive to take over Maricopa County. And the headline refers to it as an impending bloodbath. Columnist Charles Blow has a new piece for the New York Times entitled A Biden Bloodbath. 2018 midterms, you can bet that they 100% are fearing a slaughter. In fact, the word bloodbath and massacre come up frequently. The Republican Party will be destroyed. It's going to be a bloodbath. There's going to be a bloodbath one way or the other. Bloodbath, bloodbath for Bernie Sanders. It's been a bloodbath. They're shaping up to be a bloodbath. Head off a bloodbath in next year's crucial midterm. Off year elections are often a bloodbath. This week's bloodbath for Democrats. A bloodbath at the ballot box. But when Trump say bloodbath is a bad word, he got to mean something else. Even though they cut out what he was saying about the cars. He cut it. They took out their whole thing. This is why you can't believe what you've been hearing in the media. They want you to have fear. They want you to feel. That's how they control you. Watch this from TikTok. Yeah, a bloodbath, according to Donald Trump. Do you folks see what he's doing here? He's trying to scare people into supporting him or staying quiet and not making their voices heard. And to that, I say, screw you, Donald Trump. You don't get to try to scare the American people into submission so you can achieve your lifelong dream of becoming a dictator. That's what Donald Trump wants to achieve, and that's what he's saying here. We cannot allow this guy back into office in 2024. Our democracy quite literally depends on it. So I heard that, I don't know how true it is, that they were using the young people on TikTok now, the Biden administration. They're desperate. Isn't it amazing? It's up to you. You can be free or you can be enslaved. 888-7753-773. When I come back, I'm taking your phone calls and super chat. What is hell on earth inside of you and outside of you, inside of others? Overcome your hell. You can. You can be free. You can have perfect peace. Back in a moment. I have books that are amazing. I highly recommend you get them. Seven Guaranteed Stuff to Spiritual, Family, and Financial Success Guide. Even if you're not starting a business, but you have a job or you're on welfare, it can help you if you do. Be doers of the word, all right? 
from rage to responsibility, from rage. That's what I write about in the first chapter, especially how I overcame. Scam, how the black leadership exploits black Americans. They are using them, and blacks are too willing to be used. And then my last book, The Antidote, Healing America from the Poison of Hate, Blame, and Victimhood. They are all amazing books, and they are helpful. Go to rebuildingtheman.com if you want an autograph copy or call 800-411-2663. Okay, welcome back. 888-7753-773. That's one line open at 888-77-JESSE. Um, if you need counseling, we have the best counseling service on this side of heaven by phone, Skype, or walk-in. But you got to make an appointment. Go to rebuildingtheman.com, rebuildingtheman.com, or call 800-411-BOND. 800-411-2663 to make an appointment. Family, individuals, marriage, or whatever. Counseling service. And subscribe and follow JLP Radio Network on YouTube and Instagram. JLP Radio Network on YouTube and Instagram. Do it now. Hurry, hurry, hurry. It's amazing to me how the depths of how evil hate us. Have you ever thought about how much evil hates you? Just you as one person, an individual. Have you ever thought of how much evil hate you? Evil hate you. And you're so dumb that you won't work to overcome it. You love it. You love being hated. You love evil. And then you're so dumb, you try to bring other people to your hell. Revenge, gossiping, uh, suicidal thoughts, drugs, and alcohol, whatever. Evil hates you. There's no love in evil. There's no love in anger. Anger hates you. Anger is hatred. Anger is judgment. Anger is playing God. But just FYI, whatever you want to do with it. Rich is a first-time caller out of Missouri. Rich, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Jesse, how are you, young man? All is well, sir. Thanks for calling. Hey, I've been listening to you for about two or three months, and uh, you and I are uh, uh, identical thinkers. Uh, when I was about 18, I was born again, and uh, just commenting on something that I haven't heard you say, but in my life, I'm be 72 shortly, but I've never been able to really see in front of myself, but I've always been able in the present to just kind of accept what is, uh, not judging it. There's a guy out of Los Angeles that I first listened to. Um, his name was Roy Masters. Everybody... 888-7753-773. If you're going to mention name, you need to let the producer know in I mean, the producer know in advance. Let me go to uh, Eric out of hey, store. Eric out of California. Eric, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hey, Jesse. How you doing today, man? All this well, Eric. Good. Can you hear me okay? Loud and clear. All right, buddy. Hey, let me just step outside the door here real quick. I know you're pressed for time. Um, I wanted to ask you a question. Sorry about the background noise. Hey, sometimes I get really nervous. Here, hold on. Hold on. You went into it from a quiet place 
to a noisy place. Let me go to, uh, uh, I'm a, when uh, you get it right, I'll come back to it. Don't hang up. 888-7753-773. Let me go to Joel out of Oklahoma. Hey, hey Joel, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hey, Jesse, you can call me Joel. I don't care. Oh, oh is it, how do you, how do you well, pronounce it's it? Joel, but it's Joel, but a lot of people say Joel. Okay. And I, I don't care. I, I say, I'm Joel. I, I'm Choctaw. Well, go ahead. Like, like you say, Joel, he black. I say, I, Joel, I, Choctaw. Nice. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Hey, I talked to you about a month ago, a month and a half ago. And uh, I think the reason that people are going into the animal, going back to the animal, is because we're living in such a antichrist spirit, a demonic spirit now. Because we're living in the end times, and I think that, uh, of course, the Word tells us that those things are going to happen, and I think that's what's going on. What do you think? When you say the end times, what do you mean? Well, I say end times, we're in, when I say end time, I mean we are beginning to live in the end time according to God's Word, the Bible. The prophets, we're going into, we're getting more closer the coming second coming of Jesus Christ. Um, when you say, but, but I, the end time of what? The end time of the thing that, uh, as we know, as we know it now, the way the, the way uh, the end end of the age, I should say. It, should oh, have okay. Said. Because um, I've been hearing all my life, at least that we're getting near the end time and and but what I've come to realize is that Christ has already come a second time I don't, I don't think he has come a second time because we don't we because uh the uh we haven't went through the millennial age yet according to the bible what's a millennial revelation what's a millennial age well, it's a thousand-year kingdom that Jesus Christ will set up after he comes and takes the dead in Christ first, and those that are still alive will follow those. And uh, those that are true believers in Jesus Christ, he will set up his millennial 1,000-year reign. And those of us that have followed Jesus Christ we will live and reign with him in those thousand-year millennial. But that new kingdom, um, I guess whatever you call it, is already set up in us, and you can live. Well, you can live on this earth in perfect peace if you were to live from that kingdom. Well, that's true. We, but there's a difference in the earthly kingdom and the heavenly kingdom. People don't understand. There's a difference between the earthly. And the heavenly kingdom, there are two there are differences there. What's, the, di the, what's the difference? Well, the difference in the heavenly kingdom is what is yet to come to us down to earth through God. When he, when he comes and sends the new Jerusalem, that will be heavenly kingdom coming down to the earthly kingdom. God, there's nothing. It's always uh, different uh, with Him. Do you, know, what, you say what now? What's the What's the earthly kingdom? The earthly kingdom is what we're living in now. The heavenly kingdom is separate. It's in a different dimension than what we live in. And where is we that? What, what is the earth? The heavenly kingdom. The heavenly kingdom is the kingdom that God has set up now, where He is reigning on the throne. That's the heavenly kingdom. And you don't yeah. realize that the heavenly kingdom is all also inside of you? Well, sure it is, but it's uh, it's the the Holy Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit that dwells with inside me. But but the Holy, Holy Spirit dwells in the kingdom inside of you. That's true. That's true. But, there, but there is a difference between the heavenly kingdom. We don't live... We live in the spirit, 
in, in the natural world. The heavenly kingdom where God is now is supernatural. But so do you believe that do you believe that the heavenly kingdom is inside of you? Well, God is inside me now. His spirit. When I was born again, when I repented and I was baptized in Jesus Christ's name for the remission of my sins, I received the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's what Acts 2.38 tells me. That. Do you believe that the kingdom of heaven is inside of you? I believe that, that no, I don't believe that I live inside the kingdom of heaven. I live in the uh, kingdom why don't of you the live, earth. Why don't you live inside the kingdom of heaven? Because I'm on the earthly realm right now. And so, I live, God, li God lives within me. The Holy Spirit abides within me. It's not me, but he that dwelleth inside me. But why don't you dwell? You said you've been born again of God. Why don't you yes. dwell in that kingdom with him? I do. I do but you just said you faith. don't. Well, I don't live in the heavenly kingdom because that's where God abodes now. Is God inside of you? He is, his, his spirit is inside me, yes, his Holy Spirit. Is God inside of you? Yes. And so, and God is above us too, right? Well, that is true. God is at the head, the man, and then the God, woman, and then the God is God is above us and inside of us, right? That is true. So why don't you live in that kingdom inside of us, inside of you? Well, there's a difference, Jesse. If you understand the Bible, there's two different kingdoms. There's an earthly kingdom, and then there's a heavenly kingdom. Uh, because this is not Bible Thumping Thursday, I got to run, but I know. real fast, what is the earthly kingdom? The earthly kingdom is where we abode now. This is the age that we live in. And where is the, the heavenly kingdom? kingdom? And God, God has set up this earthly kingdom for us. And where is the heavenly kingdom? The heavenly kingdom is in the dimension that God lives in. And is that inside of you? God is inside of me, but you is can't that... live in the heavenly kingdom, Jesse. Oh. You have to live in the natural kingdom that we live in, the and earthly kingdom. So God was lying, Christ was lying when he said no, the kingdom of no, heaven. No, they're not. They're not what, lying. Was Christ lying when he said the kingdom of heaven is at hand? And that the that kingdom is, of heaven is, is right. within us, and that we can That's live from that kingdom within. When I say that at the end of the age, he's talking about that kingdom is fixing to come to hand. And let me do this because of time. You know, call me um, Thursday if you can. I'm Bobby Cuthbert on Thursday, all right? Okay. All right, buddy. We're on the same, we're on the same page. Okay. Thank you, buddy. 888-7753-773. Let me try air again. Air, let's try it again. Hey, Jesse, this should be a lot better, man. I locked myself in the cab of a tractor here. How's that? That's better. Go ahead. Right, dude. Uh, hey, I've done a lot of bad things in my life. Um, and I, I read the Bible and I listen to it. I don't remember it. But sometimes I do remember certain things, and um, I just the other day I got home and I was sitting on the couch, and and I think I've asked you this before, maybe not in so many words, but I, I'm like, did, have I done things that were so bad that I'm going to go to hell? You know, and I've I do the silent prayer. I really don't speak to God too much in words anymore. I feel like. English is of the devil. I mean, God doesn't speak to us in, in English. Only the devil does. So, I mean, I do the silent prayer and, and I pray, but sometimes I just feel like, man, I'm going to go to hell because <laughs> of the things I did when I was younger. <laughs> and I just, I wanted your opinion on that. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you do the things you've done? Because I was possessed with the devil. So, I was evil. I mean, so was it you doing it, or was the devil doing it through you? It was the devil doing it through me. So then, why do you say you have done it? 
Well, because I, it was me that did the physical act, Jesse. And, and who is you? Who, 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 who is you? Who are you? I'm, I'm a, one of God's children. But who are you? I'm not sure I understand how to answer that, Jesse. You said it was you that did it, but yet you said it was the devil doing it through you. I don't understand why you think you did it, knowing that the devil did it through you, evil spirit did it through you. Why are you taking credit and saying that you have done it? Well, that's what that, I, I guess I shouldn't be, Jesse. That's but, the answer I was looking for. But why are you doing that, though? Am I, is it, is it, is it the devil that's causing me to do that? I'm not sure. I mean, why, why am I taking it upon myself? I mean, uh, I have a guilty conscience for some reason, which I shouldn't, and all emotion is of Satan. So, I mean, I don't know if I'm answering your question. I really would like to answer that question. The devil caused you to do, working through you to do whatever you have done your whole life. And it was never you at all. And the devil caused you to do it, influenced you to work through you to do that. And then he making you feel guilty and doubt that God is going to let you in heaven. I, that's, I think you're 100% correct, obviously, which you usually are. God is not judging you. In God's eyes, you are not guilty of anything. In God's eyes, you have never done anything wrong at all. In God's eyes, all of your sins have been wiped away. In God's eyes, you are a free man. He is not judging you, but you believe in the lies of evil that is you. And that's why you feel like, and Satan tell you, you in hell, look what you've done. And God going to keep you in hell. And you believe those lies. He's condemning you so he can keep you afraid. He can keep you overreacting and keep you in the hell of your imagination. Wow, that's amazing, Jesse. God, Thank you so much. God knows that it was never you. And as soon as you can realize it has never been you and it wasn't you, the sooner you would die from that false ego nature and you'll be free right here on earth. That makes a lot of sense. I just, you know, it's like I said, I got home and I'm like, man, I, there's no other punishment for what I've done other than burning in hell, you know, and I don't want to do that. Well, when you're in your thoughts and feelings, you are in hell. That makes sense. I believe hell exists right here on earth if you let it. Is that incorrect? It's inside of you. And it's outside of you, inside of others. Yes, sir. Everyone that lives in thoughts and feelings are living in hell. Wow. That's why God said to bring every thought, every imagination into captivity. Your thoughts are not your own. They're not his. My children shall know me by my voice. Not by the voice of the devil inside of your head. Does does God speak to us in English? Like, does he actually have a voice? He speaks you to you in habla español, China, <laughs> oh, English. <laughs> so, no, what God does, he gives you understanding. He gives you wisdom. Right. He He's re- not going to be. He reveals things to not, you. Are you doing the? You're not going to. Are you doing the silent prayer? Yes, I hope I'm doing it right. I looked it up on uh, church on your website. Are you doing it every morning, every night? I'm doing it every morning, usually two or three times during the day. Sometimes I forget at night. I forget on the weekend sometimes, and then I feel weak. I think that's why I'm I'm where I'm at today, because I didn't do it enough on the weekend. If I do it three or four times a day, it it gets stronger. I, I feel more peace. But when I don't do it, I, the devil creeps back in. I want to encourage you to work on yourself all day long. And you just have to work all day long, not just in the morning, not just at night. But practice being aware. I'm telling you, you become more conscious, you become more present, and you will be with God. And it will be impossible for Satan to deceive you. So when you're like walking through doors... 
when you're making your dinner, your lunch, when you're getting in out of your car, little simple things, practice being aware of yourself doing those things by, by not being in your head thinking about tomorrow or yesterday, which doesn't exist. Practice being present in little things then you will grow in big things. You you made a lot of sense. I wasn't sure what you meant by being present when I talked to you before, but now that makes sense. Just be present with the, the what you're actually doing at the time instead of when you open the door thinking about, oh, traffic, or, oh, i got to do this when I get home, right? Right. But be okay. aware of yourself going, opening the door, going through the door, walking down the hallway, walking through another door, just simple, and then at work, if you get caught up, because you may get caught up while you're doing the job itself, but as soon as the work is finished, that task is finished, become aware of your body again. Be present with your body instead of thinking about what's going to happen next. Okay, that, that, that helps a lot. You're very wise, Jesse. Hey, can I ask you one more question? Yes. I don't feel like this this prayer that I've been t- trained to do over so many years, and my family does. You know, this thing where you sit down and you you, you know you either pray out loud in English or or you you pray in your head in English. I mean that that to me, you know, after doing the silent prayer and listening to you for a couple years, it, that doesn't seem to me to be like the right way to approach it. I mean, I think the silent prayer is really the only way. Why does uh, the that, other way? Why is it the other way doesn't seem right to you? Well, because I don't, I don't believe that God speaks to us in English. I believe only the devil does. So then, so, if I mean, you believe that, why don't uh, you just stop doing it and be still and know God? Why don't you just drop it? I did. I'm, oh, I'm okay. trying to figure out. I'm trying to figure out a way to convey it to my wife by not conveying she, it to she her. Does all, Pardon? By not conveying it to her, unless you ask. Let's, oh, that's right. Don't ca- don't cast pearls to swine, right? Yeah, let your wife suffer in her hell until she's ready to overcome it. You can point out to her if she start overreacting that she's angry. She got to work on your aim, but you can't change your wife. Let her stay in her hell, and you just work on you. Yeah, I told her at one point she's Satan was her daddy, and she kind of looked at me funny. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> but leave her to hell. Just don't judge her for being in the hell. And don't accept her hell. But leave her to hell. You just work on you. What about my influential child who's only 11? Can I, can I try to tell him in English that, you know, maybe you should do it this way? Who do you tell English? Do, do you speak another language or something? No. Oh. I just, I'll reiterate. I feel like when, when you hear something in your head and you think it's God, it's not God. It's Let me do this. I got to go. But yeah, be an, inf- be an influence for your child. Back in a moment, folks. I counsel with men and women, families, and individuals around the world. Most people are unhappy. They're miserable. They have rough lives. They're depressed, suicidal, young and old, of all races. I understand. I know why, and I do understand it. Because exactly what's happening in me is happening with everybody outside of me, inside of them. And I've noticed that with those who really, really, really want to understand, they overcome it just like that. Out of one counseling session. If you need counseling, you can go to rebuildingtheman.com or call 800-411-2663. 800-411-BOND. Best counseling service on this side of heaven. Your Israel-Palestine war drama, uh, I have the update. And Oprah, destigmatizing weight loss drugs, abortion increasing, and Biden, sorry, ga- Biden gas prices. This is the end of our two already of Bible, not of Bible Thumper Thursday, of Country and Western Tuesday, March 19th, A.D. 2024. The lines are full, guys. JLP will be right back to your calls and your super chats. We see them coming in. But first, fake news, not fake news. Israel Palestine war drama. People watching Gaza, according to the far left female run outlet, the skim, 
Yesterday, the evil UN-backed Integrated Food Security Phase Classification, IPC, reported that famine is imminent for at least 300,000 Palestinians in northern Gaza. Also said at least half of Gaza's population, approximately 1.1 million, could suffer from famine by July of this year. The report comes amid global homo pressure for a ceasefire, and as Israel and Hamas could be getting ready for uh, negotiations, restart it. Israeli Prime Minister Bibi Benjamin Netanyahu has agreed to send a special convoy to Washington, D.C. Officials expected to discuss alternative strategies to a ground invasion in Rafah, where 1.5 million Palestinians are seeking refuge. It's a big mess. And uh, speaking of starving, because they're they're facing threats of starvation, there is space for all points of view, says Oprah Winfrey. Let's stop the shaming and blaming. There's no place for it. According to Comedy Nonsense Network, Oprah Winfrey was recounting her weight loss journey, weight loss journey, in an emotional primetime special the other day. Wednesday, I mean, Oprah Winfrey said she used weight loss medication drugs, I guess, as one tool to manage her weight and hopes to help reduce the stigma around medicines that may help those struggling with obesity, being fat. Uh, Abortion is also increasing under Evil Joe, also known as Obama Part 3. CNN reports abortions are on the rise in the United States despite more than a dozen statewide bans that have taken effect since the so-called Supreme Court's rightful Dobbs decision, Dobbs decision that revoked the federal fake right to abortion back in June of 2022. There was more than one million abortions in the United States in 2023. That's the highest. Uh, it makes the highest rate in more than a decade. It used to be, not be for years. It was a million to, a million a year more or more, and then it was less than like 800,000 or less. Now it's over a million again. 10% jump from 2020, by the way, according to a new report. Well, 2020 was the China virus shut down. Who knows? A new report from the Guttmacher Institute, a pro-abortion so-called research and policy organization focused on so-called sexual and reproductive health that supports uh, killing the babies in the womb. They call it abortion rights. No such thing. The data also suggests that medication abortion is more a more common option than ever, where you take a pill to kill the baby. There are currently 14 states with total bans, or a couple pills. 14 states currently with total bans against the procedure. They call it a procedure. Nice euphemism for baby killing. While nearly every other state has seen an increase in the number of abortions provided from, uh, so-called provided, from 2020 to 2023. Interesting, they call it providing a killing, a baby killing. <laughs> what a mess. Uh, Obama gas price is also going up, not just abortion. Prices at the pump rising, and industry experts say they'll keep going up in the coming weeks and months, especially if Russian oil facilities continue to get hit by drone attacks. Unwanted development for consumers heading into spring. Also a problem for the black on the inside White House under Crooked Joe. Federal Reserve officials hoping to declare victory over inflation. What a mess. The national average price for regular gas jump climbed to $3.48 a gallon today. Sounds kind of cheap living here in L.A. According to AAA, up by 40%. I mean, 40 cents. Up 40 cents since uh, mid-January. The U.S. is pumping more oil than any country in history, but it marks the first time since late last year the U.S. gas prices are now higher on a year-over-year aver- basis. What a mess. And meanwhile, they're persecuting our greatest president, Donald J. Trump. It's a mess. I'm James Haig. Now back to JLP. Last hour, hour three. <laughs>
uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Welcome to the uh, third hour of the show already. You can get involved by calling 888-7753-773, 888-77-JESSE. My biblical question for this week. My biblical question. Do you have morals and values? If so, where did you find them? Do you have morals and values? If so, where did you find them? We have every way that you can watch and support the show. Listen on com slash show. JesseLeePeterson.com slash show. And if you're out and about doing whatever you're doing, trying to cross the borders, snatching, and grabbing, beating up people in the streets, on the trains in New York, beating up people, uh, smashing and grabbing, getting cocaine, or fitting all, or hating the Jews, or hating the whites, or hating the blacks, or hate, whatever you might be doing. You could be listening to the show on your iPhone or iPad by calling the listen line at 641 on Talk Stream Live there, 641-793-1500. That's 641-793-1500. Don't forget to follow us, JLP Talk on X, Jesse Lee Peterson on Instagram. Like, follow, ring the bell, subscribe. Y'all know what to do on, on, uh, on social media. What the? To donate and have your comments read out loud, go to buymeacoffee.com slash JLP Talk. Buymeacoffee.com slash JLP Talk or Jesse Lee Peterson on Instagram. All right, to donate and have your comments read out loud. I forgot what I was saying. Did I say go to do, donate? Oh, okay. To donate, uh, just call me Joe Biden. To donate and have your comments read out loud, go to buymeacoffee.com slash just JLP talk. It's Tuesday. It's the last hour of the show on Tuesday. It is. Country and Western Tuesday. Eha! Bring back, bring back, oh, bring back my country to me. Bring back, bring back, bring back my country to me. What the? Me. Who let the dogs out? Amazing. 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 I want to show you a quick example, and then I get to your course, of what insanity looked like. It's just one example. There are so many. There are many, many. I gave you a bunch of them in the first hour with this dog stuff. Insane. I want to show you another example of what insanity looked like. I played you the one with the Great White Hope. The Great White Hope was talking about bloodbath and China and the car situation. And the children of the lie tried to twist that, right? Insane. Evil. I want to show you another example of what insanity looked like. And some of you might, I'm sure a lot of you might be aware of this already. But this is, this, I couldn't even understand this. I mean, I could understand, but it's an example of sanity. And it's about Elon Musk versus Donald, Don, Don Lemon. Talking about high consciousness versus lower consciousness, right? Elon Musk being of high consciousness, Don Lemon being of lower consciousness. This is from the New York Post. Don Lemons sent over an astronomical wish list to Elon Musk during contract talk talks 
to host a show on X, including, listen to what this man is asking this man for, just to host a little stupid show on X. On X, including, he wanted a free Tesla Cybertruck. You would think, oh, well, that's enough. He gonna ask, he's not going to ask for anything else. And what you think, according to this report, I don't know, he, wa- he asked for a free Tesla Cybertruck. Is John Lemon black? He must be black. Talk about reparations. Free Tesla Cybertruck. He wanted a $5 million upfront payment. On top of an eight million dollar salary, yeah, he black. This is reparation. He wanted an equity stake in the multi billion dollar company. What the? And the rights to approve any changes in S policies as to as it relates to news content. You know, this, this guy must be black. This is insane. A Tesla... I'm going to have to go and talk to Elon. A Tesla Cybertruck. He want a free one. $5 million up front. $8 million salary. He want an equity stake in the multi-billion dollar company and the right to approve any changes in X policies as it relates to news content. What is, what is he on? Or is he on anything? Amazing. He black. And then, according to the New York Post, Musk, Musk, I must have been insane. Mama died on a weekend to to Spain. Uh, <laughs> Musk agreed to do an interview with Lemon, despite the fact that he was aware of some of Lemon's outlandish demands. Who does Don Lemon think he is? Was he getting all that from C-SPAN? Or CNN, I mean? And, and, and Don Lemon used to be the guy that worked for C-SPAN. Or CNN, I'm sorry. Wall Street Journal. Don Lemon's released a contentious interview with Elon Musk that he allegedly alleged led the billion... Oh, I got it now. I'm sorry. Don Lemon released the contentious, contentious interview with Elon Musk that he alleged led the billionaire to cancel the Lemon's deal with X, saying he didn't know what he had, where he had gone wrong. I want you to hear this interview. I want you to think about this. This guy begging for all this stuff, so must agree to an interview, and Don Lemon showed all his true colors. I see your true colors shining through. I see your true colors. This is from Wall Street Journal. No. This is, here's, uh, this is from X. Here's Lemon and Musk talking about free speech on X. Watch this. Do you believe that X and you have some responsibility to moderate hate speech on the platform? I think we have a responsibility to adhere to the law. It doesn't concern you that hate speech has gone. Research shows that it's gone up on the platform since you took over. That's not concerning to you? I believe that is false. In fact, the research that I've seen says it went down. We delete things if they are illegal. But these have been up there for a while. Are they illegal? Uh, no, they're not illegal, but they're hateful and they can, they can lead to violence. What, what you're suggesting is censorship that goes beyond well, the law. It's and what I'm saying is uh, I, that we, I guess, have a disagreement because I do not believe in censorship that goes beyond the law, and you do. We have a difference of opinion in that regard. 
Yes, you want censorship and I don't. No, I don't want censorship at Yes, all. you do. No, I want responsibility. I think there is, I think there... You desperately want censorship. No, if I want a censorship... <laughs> you want censorship so bad you can taste it. No, that's not true. <laughs> no. It's not true. I think that there's right and wrong. So, and I'm against censorship. I'm, I'm in favor of freedom of speech. Yeah. Nice. I can't believe, I mean, I can believe it because I understand, I'm understanding the difference between good and evil. I bet you, I wonder if Elon Musk and their thing, I can't believe this person thing. I'm going to hire them after all this mess. Here's Lemon and Musk talking about race issues. Why is this from X? You have been deeply outspoken about the issue of trans rights. You posted trans rights. You uh, posted that pronouns and bio mean the woke mind virus ate your brain. Do you know what the term woke actually means? It's come to mean a lot of things. But what it actually, what originally it was meant to mean. It's just being aware of inequities in society and, and being aware of facts and, and history. Yeah, I think it's come to be... I think, I think being aware of inequities in society is fine, of course. Um, but uh, trying to blame everything uh, on, on trying to make everything a race issue is, uh, I think, uh, divisive and corrosive to society. I think, I think we should, we should, we should uh, not, not make this a constant uh, subject. I think we need to move on. I think we should just, you know, um, treat people like people. We, 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 are, we, are, we are all descended from slaves. Yeah. Well, all of us. Yeah. But, um, so, but it's just that, a question of when. Is it, was it more recent or less recent? That's it. Amazing. See why we need white conservative people back to run our country? We're going to be begging white people to come back, like that black woman out of Mommy Africa, South Africa. White people, y'all need to come back. Look at this mess. If white people was in charge, this would not be happening. You know, Don Lemon, unless he was playing when he was asking for all that stuff, he knew he wasn't going to get it. And it was just a setup to interview Musk. I don't know. The heart is so wicked, you just don't know. The human heart is evil. I can't, I can't, I can't understand, I do mean, I can't believe he thought that he's going to ask for all this stuff from Musk, and then he's going to do that kind of interview with his potential boss and the owner of the company and think he's still going to have a job with him. I just can't believe he thought he would still be there. But the devil is something else. Luann, it's a first time call out of England. Luann, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hi, Jesse. How are you? All is well, Luann. Thank you for calling. Oh, thank you for taking my call. Um, so my question is if I need to have a relationship with my father, my dad. Uh-huh. Um, so I've not had a relationship with him for 20 years, but recently I've had like a strong desire to maybe call him, um, and try to have a relationship. He's not one to have a relationship with. He doesn't really care for his kids, but, um, it's just something that's been going around in my head. And your question for me is what? So... If I go into it a bit more, my relationship, I believe, is affected by it. So I don't um, maintain intimate relationships, if you like, um, because I just believe they're going to do the same as my dad. So I don't know if, if it's important for me to try and reach out to him. So is, is there a need for it? And Question. when you say that... Did, 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 I forget. Did you say that he doesn't care about relationship with his children? Yeah, exactly. How do you know that? We, um, I have tried to reach out. And at times, for example, he would bring his bachelor lifestyle into our meeting that we had for once a week, if you like. So, so you... for example, he brought, he brought a younger woman along oh, I to see. a coffee meeting that we had that we usually have once a week. And that was kind of the last straw for me. Um, 
So your yeah. father, you and your other sibling, or just you and your father would meet? Correct. And then was it just you and your father? Yes. And, and he would bring his girlfriend sometime with him? It wasn't a girlfriend. It might be a different girl. Oh, okay. Time, if you like. And you mm-hmm. would ask him not to do that? That? Um, I didn't really question it. Why not? I was just more shocked. Why did you was, let him know um, you wanted to meet with him alone and not to bring anyone? You know, it was such a long time ago. I think I may have done. I may have made that clear to him. Oh, okay. I'm sure I did because I was outspoken. It was more than 15 years ago now. I'm in my mid-30s. So. Well, okay. It happened when I was much younger. Mm. And so you would like um, to have a relationship with him now? I don't know. For some reason, I, have a des- I just have a desire to reach out to him. But yeah. he's quite neglectful so i don't know how to maybe let this go um have you and not t- ever have a relationship have you dad. apologized to him for resenting him being angry at him um no why not i um there was a time where when i was 18 i did go to him because I wanted to understand him not as my dad. Um, so I, I, I was asking him questions about his childhood, what it was like for him growing up, etc. And that was my way of having an awareness of why he reacted the way he did. Right. So and I didn't really ask him. I, I, really, I, didn't, I didn't apologize to him for hating him, no. Why not? I, I kind of just accepted. Yeah, that didn't. I was 18 then. But so even at 18, it's old enough to apologize for resenting him. Mm, it didn't come to mind. Oh, okay. I understand that. I mm-hmm. highly mm-hmm. recommend you, if you're able to speak to your father, you apologize for resenting him and 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 ask, well, why weren't you there? What happened? So you can understand him. And it doesn't mean, I mean, and at that point, you'll be able to hang out with him if you want to. You'll be able mm-hmm. to speak up without being angry because you will have understanding. And then when you forgive your father, your earthly father, you're going to love him because when you don't have anger, you have love. And and that's mm-hmm. and you're going to have the love of God, not the love of Satan, that emotional mm-hmm. crap. And and if you're with him, fine. If you won't, fine. But you would have re- reconnection to him and through your earthly father, you will return to your spiritual father. When you okay, love so your earthly learning. father, you're going to naturally love God. Right. And I do. I have no anger towards him. I was a daddy's girl and I would forgive him in any case. It's just, um, yeah, I just don't want to have this yearning constantly. Yeah. Um, well, call him. I don't know if it, affects, if it affects my relationships when I'm trying to get into marriage, etc. I don't know if that's the reason why I find it a bit tricky well, to stay in relationships. It's natural for a woman to want to be married, but not where she try to get her husband. Don't try to get into anything. When you forgive, you're going to start living a life of consciousness, awareness, the mind of God, and life will happen on its own, and what is meant to be will happen naturally. If it's meant for you to get married, you will. If you don't, if it's not meant to be that way, you won't, but you'll be fine. Mm-hmm. 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 So don't try to make anything happen. Mm-hmm. You know, do practical things. Get up and get a job, go to work, make your meals and things like that. But don't right. try to make life work. Life will happen on its own. So, yeah, right. I would I would recommend you contact and just say, hey, you know, I'm sorry for anything I've held against you. I was wrong. And and you'll okay. be fine. Yeah. I'll I'll try my best to reach out to him. And do that because, yeah, it's needed. But have no expectation. Don't expect him to Mm -hmm. accept it or not. Don't expect Mm -hmm. him to admit to anything or not. God will forgive Mm -hmm. you as you are forgiving him. Right. I mean, I already did the hard part, and I went to my mum and forgave her, so I'm sure my dad will be a breeze. (laughs) How did that go with your mother? It went awfully. (laughs) It went really bad. She almost died. She almost died when you forgave her? Correct. What do you mean? 
I mean, she was panicking. She was crying a lot and she couldn't breathe. Um, she wanted to hold a congregation against me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she did what you said mums would do. And that was... Evil people cannot stand alone. They have to build an army against you. Yeah, but it helps a lot. Yeah. Yes. So I will reach out to my dad. Absolutely. And were you nervous that she would die, that she was going to die? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, actually, because I'd listened to you for so many years, so suffer and die is uh, yes. one of my mottos in life, yeah. So but, it had to be done. And yes. She apologized a few days later. She apologized and... We left it there. So it did help a lot. Right on. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. contact your father and just ask what happened, you know, and apologize for resenting any little anger you might have against him. And I'm telling you, Luann, you haven't seen anything yet. Do the silent prayer, meaning practice being aware rather than being in your head thinking about the past or the future, which doesn't exist anyway. Right. It's only in imagination. It's not even real. Mm -hmm. And your life is just going to unfold like 90 going north. Yeah, I've listened to you for a few years now, and it's helped a yeah. lot. I'm able to step back and be observational yes. rather than being in it. Yeah, so it's helped me a lot. Which, so thank you. And when I, I called a couple of years ago thinking you would be visiting the UK uh, since then, but you've not come. I hope to come soon. We'll see what happens. But mm. uh, I, I've, I've had several invitations, so I may take up one. Yeah, that would be awesome. And, and uh, yeah, it'll be fun. I want you to mm. know that uh, you stay with this, work on you, and don't look back, don't look forward, and stay away from the illusion of a future or past. It's mm -hmm. going to blow your mind, Luann. You haven't seen anything yet. And the more you mm. practice staying present in the presence of now instead of your head, mm -hmm. you're going to really know God and it's going to blow your mind. It's 100%. Even walking in from one room to another, I'm in that state where I'm watching myself. Right or on. at least with myself in the present. Yeah. And it does help. Because that's all we have is the present. All we have sense. is now. That's right. Mm -hmm. And never, never, ever, 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 never judge yourself or anyone else again. And, uh uh, forgive them. They know not what they do and never judge. You're going to be able to see what's going on in someone else, but you won't judge them for it. You will have no opinion because you will have understanding. And that's where it's going to be with your father. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's right. Well, thank uh, you, Jesse. You're welcome. Call me again. I wish you well. I will do. All, all the best. Thank Take you. Take care. All right. Bye. Bye now. Amazing. Matt, there's one line open, 888-775-3773. Matt is a first time call out of Ohio. You, All is well, Matt. Welcome to the show. Good, good. Hey, you know what? I appreciate it. I, I just kind of came on to you, Jesse, the last couple of months. Somehow I saw you on YouTube. I find the common sense, the wisdom uh, in your work to be, to be amazing. Amazing. Uh, and it's interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. Uh, the last caller was is a good segue. Okay. Um, and I know you can relate to this, too. Uh, you know, uh, a woman, a girl, uh, wanting to identify with her father. You know, I, I want to talk to you today because my question is, I have two daughters. I support them. I have since birth uh, with with a woman whom I wasn't married to, who was out of wedlock. Um, however, uh, she lived with me for a good amount of time. Um Things things were were good for for quite some time, but we ended up separating. She left. Um, what I see her doing with the kids now, you know, vis a vis indoctrination, leftist mentality. One of my daughters, you know, literally talking about, you know, oh, dad, you know, I can be a boy or a girl. It, it, it's insanity. My question to you is, what are steps that a father like me can take? You know. Above and beyond kind of the standard in the courts, which I'm doing, um, you know, being the best father, not by 
what I say, but by example for my daughters, what can I do to affect a change? You know, the system in this country, like the last caller, I mean, there might be quite a bit she didn't know, you know, relative to the relationship between her mother and her father. But, you know, I'm fighting for these, these girls every day. And, it, and I'll be da- I will be damned, sir. I will, I will be dead before I stop. But when you say you're how, fighting for them, how are you fighting for them? In the courts primarily. Uh, but what I found is in the courts, there's this baked in injustice relative to time with the kids, relative to my ability to affect, for example, where they go to school or what kind of health care they get. For example, she can, you know, given the way the courts are set up, uh, you know, she can, you know, tons, getting her tonsils taken out or medical procedures, well, whatever it is, schooling, tutoring, after-school activities, etc. I am so frustrated, and I know you talk about anger. It's one of the reasons I listen to you daily. And I, I don't want to have this anger, but it's just, it's eating me alive. It's, it's, it's you know, economically, I'm spending, you know, a ton of money, and you know, relative to a turn. All I want to do is have time with my kids, but she fights me at every moment. You know, making petty things, mountains out of molehills, and I just and so you, you know, don't think, you don't have visitation right yet because you're in court. I do, I do, I do have them every other weekend, but she keeps fighting. Oh. So, in other words, she'll take something petty. For example, and I'll give you a specific example quickly. Uh, I took the kids down this past summer uh, down to down to Hilton Head. I was, you know, and we were in the car. They're young. They were getting, and I travel a lot for what I do for work. And I said, you know what? Myrtle Beach is two, two hours closer. We'll go there. You know, and I, as, as I'm literally, as I'm driving down, staying at the Hilton, switched up to a place. And, you know, she sued me for it because technically I had to inform her exactly where I would be taking the kids on vacation for a week in the summer. Amazing. These type of petty, and I lost because technically, technically, it was my duty to inform her, although. We were in the same state, and it was simply for their comfort. Right. You yeah. know, and stuff like and And that yeah. precluded me, by the way, these of you, the courts, that precluded me from seeing my kids me. for five months. How old and are so your I kids? My, uh, seven and nine. And so your question for me is what? Is what can, it, what can guys like us do? I know you've been through it, granted, you know, decades back, but... What can I do to ensure that I had a solid relationship with my daughter and to try to, you know, the, the courts are so biased against fathers. There are a lot of fathers out there that are made out to be deadbeats that are not. Yeah. It's simply the court won't give them the time of day. And so your question and for me is what? What should I do? Like, like, how do I proceed? Like, how does a man who is striving to see his kids, the system's against them, you know, you got guardian ad litems, you got folks in the courts that are feminists, that are leftists. I'm very, by the way, I'm very conservative. She's very left wing. I mean, how do I fight this? How do I fight the good fight, Jesse? Is she Russian? You know, the, is she Russian? No. Uh-oh. No, actually, no. She's American, you know. I mean, mm-hmm. she's uh, and so your question for me is what? What can men like me do above and beyond? You know, working with the courts in which we, we get slaughtered every time. What can men like us do okay. to make sure our daughters are raised in a, in a, in a way that, you know, they... Hold on, Matt. Let know, me take they, a they quick break. Don't hang up. Hold on. Let me take a quick break. And um, I'll be back in a moment. 888 jesse Back in a moment. Hold on, Matt. Treasure Chest is now open on... D Live. You know, I'm 32 years old now, and I've been I, I've been clinically depressed since I was 17 years old, and ever since I started listening to you a couple of months ago, bro, I don't even need to hear the word depression. I don't even care about that because that's not anything that I identify with anymore. Nice. I'm 100% cured. I'm 100% better because I've been listening to the Jesse Lee Peterson show. And I can't even begin to tell you how much I appreciate you. And I just can't even, you know, begin to tell you how much I really appreciate the things that you're doing for young men. Young men need to hear this. And young men need to know this message that you're delivering because it's important. 
it's vital to their lives, Jesse. I just wanted to let you know that. That's amazing. I mean, you made my day, man. When I hear one soul has returned to the Father, it's like a thousand. It's better than silver and gold. So God bless you, man. Welcome back, 888-7753-773. Quick rundown, The Hake Report, H-A-K-E, The Hake Report. is coming up at the top of this hour, The Hake Report. And Hake is back from 9 to 11 a.m. Pacific time. And he's on fire. And after The Hake Report, Joel Friday TV, he black. Joel Friday on fire for the Lord. All in the name of Jesus. We just want to hear about Jesus. And then at 12 noon, the American anchor baby. The American anchor baby. Energy given to him by God, a genius, and who learned to fly from Google. (laughs) The American anchor baby. You don't get any smarter than that. All right. I want you to go to my nonprofit, rebuildingtheman.com, and make a donation there. We got a lot more work to do. Rebuildingtheman.com, all right? We have our Entrepreneur Academy. We're building a 24-hour talk network for men only 24 hours. Isn't that amazing? And we're counseling, all kinds of things. Thank you for your support. Let me go quickly back to Matt. Out of Ohio, a first time caller. And Matt is trying to fight to maintain or get custody of his kids to work with them. The mother of the kids, out of wedlock mother, making it extremely difficult along with the court courts. And so, Matt, your question for me is what? What else can I do above and beyond, you know, whether it be interaction with the kids? I, I just sit here, Jesse, every day. I want to see my kids. And I do everything I can with my turn, but, you know, and I know there are a lot of other men in my situation who are fighting for their kids and they're not deadbeat fathers and they made out, they get made out to be deadbeat fathers. Yeah. Because, you know, what, what, what else can I do, you know, above and beyond? What you, you know, what, good... so your question for me is what else can you do? Yeah. You know, what, you know, what, what did you do? For example, I, 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 Again, I've been following what? you for a couple months, Jesse. That's it. And I love everything I've seen. I listen to everything you do. I believe what you say <clears> than <throat> anger. And yeah. I do have anger associated with this. Have you, gone and forgive the- have you gone and forgiven your mother? You know what I have? You t- I have. Just t- recently. I'm 42 years old. I would say I was probably 37. And you went and to I your have, mother and forgave I, her? I did. You told her that? I did. Oh, good. So you close to my mother. Oh, yep. it's not good. Well, close in the regard that, you know, I do have her over. When the kids are over, I want to include her in family events. That's not uh, good. But we'll come really? back to that. Yeah, let me do this okay. first. What's your question concerning the kids in court? Well, it's just the court. It's just so, so, Jesse, I'm a white male. You white. Have, I'm white. I, I do. I do. Pretty well. I, I work in the banking industry. I have for 20 years. And your but, question but for me is court, what? Well, the, above and beyond the courts, which, which again, 
and for someone that hasn't been through it, especially recently, when you have guardian ad litem, when you have the status quo where the left controls the court. I mean, the family courts for sure. All and, your, the and your question for me is what? What else can I do? What else can I do? What else can a man do to make sure his daughter, their daughters, just like the previous caller from England, their daughters understand dad loves you. And, and, and a lot of this, because they're too young to understand, a lot of this is mom. All, you know, most of it is mom. And your question for me is what? What else can I do? Drop it. In other words, what let, are, what let are him go. Blame? Seriously. One hundred percent. Let him go. And you the work kid? on yeah. And you work on you, because the only thing that's going to happen, the court's going to rip you off. The lawyers and you're going to pay for her court stuff and the kids, psych uh, counselor or whatever they call them, and yeah. and. You're gonna end up losing. Period. You're gonna lose all your money and all the kids, and you gotta pay for this stupid female for the rest of your life. Let I them, go, let them go. And the lawyers are gonna rip you off. Let them go, and you just start working on you, and let God's will be done. Do not cut the baby in half. Let her have them. Mm. That's a tough pill to swallow. But and all the reason. But what? For, for, can 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 you? How old are you? I'm 42. Oh, okay. You say can I what? Can you flesh that out? Like, what, what do you mean? Like, let him go? Yeah, let him go. My you, daughters? Yeah. I'm damn, before that happens. Well, if you don't, you will be destroyed, and so will the girls anyway. But if you let go and just work on you. At some point, they might return to you, and you'll be ready to deal with them in the right way. Interesting. But the way you're going that, now, you're going to lose all. And, and, and the pain you feel for losing your daughters right now, fighting for them and trying to get them, the pain you feel they, is not for the daughters. It's about you. Just like the— Selfish. Thing. Yeah. It's so all, it's ego? I'm sorry? So it's, it's so you're, I can understand. Oh man, I didn't expect that. But so it's ego, is what you're saying. It's so all it's, ego, because you feel like, oh, I love my daughters. I'm fighting for my daughters. I did this for my daughters. It's for my daughters when it's really for you, so that your ego can feel like a father, so your ego can feel like love. If you love them, you will let them go. And the woman is on the same trip. It's all about her. She can give two hoops or a holler about those kids. She doesn't care about you. It's all about her. So two devils are fighting one another, pretending that they're fighting for the children. If you love them, you will let them go. There should not be anything or anyone or anything or anyone that's so important to you that you're unwilling to let it go. But your ego is deceiving you. Because if the court said, Matt, you can have them 100%, this woman's still going to keep them away from you. Yeah. Well, the irony of it is, is I've gotten past the anger. There were times in the past where my guile, where the anger was so deep that uh, it was unhealthy. But uh, even the but, anger uh, was about you. It was never about the children. You were mad because you couldn't get what you wanted. And you and you see yourself as a father, and being a father that makes you feel like you're important. Interesting. I will end everything now. Do what you want, though, but I would drop you're it. You're saying literally let him like, and then see what happens. You know, let it let it be. Lay it in God's hand. Yes, and work on you. Okay. You got to overcome your ego so you can live. And if you, if if people are in it out of your life, fine. Whether you're children or not, if friends or family members are in it out of your life, fine. And it, it won't move you either way. But this is all about you. And that woman is all about her. Nobody is for the kids. The courts are no one. Because there's no love. 
I would drop it. Do you believe that love exists between a father and a daughter, Jesse? Because I'm telling you right now, and I am, a, by the way, I'm a veteran. I was Air Force, TAC-P, Special Forces. I mean, I'll stare down a barrel without blinking for those girls, sir. So I know. And that is a fact. I will stare down a barrel without blinking for those girls. But yet you won't let them and, go. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. You're being set up. You're destroying yourself. You're wasting your money. You're wasting your life. I recommend you forgive your mother. Go to your mother and forgive her for what turning you away from your father. Forgive your father. Oh, I love my father. No, my father, Jesse, that's different. My father... No, no, no. I, I, I have a great relationship with Good. my mother and father. Forgive I your do. mother. Yeah, my, forgive your mother for turning, impose her will on you or whatever the anger is, and for and forgive your father for not protecting you from your mother, and work on overcoming the, the emotion, the uh, imagination. I'm telling you, Matt. God would take care. It would be amazing for you, Jesse. I. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, it's only been two months. I mean, I listen to everything you, you put out. I, I'm grateful for you, sir. Thank you for what you do, and thank you for what you do for humanity. What do you think about thank my you. idea of letting them go? You know, it's interesting. I'm, I think that what will happen, man, it, well, and that totally caught me off guard. I didn't think you would <laughs> say that. But, but anyway, uh when I let my son go, that's when I got him back. Interesting. And see, I can see that, too, because they see it. The kids are, and they're young now, but they're getting older, and they yeah. they see reality, you know? They do. You're wasting your money with the lawyers. You're wasting your money on her. You're going to end up spending more money on her than you even want. And then you'll oh, go, God knows that's true. And then you're yeah. spending money. I pay money. $300 a month on child support. See that? And then you're spending yeah. money on the children. And then you pay for the children counseling if the court appointed one yet. You and the lawyer, your lawyer taking your money. You waste your time, man. Let them go. Thank you, Jesse. Let me know how it goes. All right. I will. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you as always. You welcome. Do the silent prayer. Have you started doing that yet? You know what I have. I've been praying a lot lately, sir. You've been and, doing uh, the silent prayer. I, I have. Oh, okay. You. Yeah. Stay I with have. that. Stay with that. Not four or five times a day, but I will uh, let it, you know, per our, the previous caller. But yeah. Okay. So for what it's worth, I do believe the kingdom of heaven exists within me. Yes. And although I am in a fallen state, yeah. given this, I, I remember that he is above us. So Right on. I, I'm surprised, honestly, Jesse, you said what you just said, but we'll give it a shot. Let me know how it goes, man. Good talking to you. Thank you, sir. Likewise. All right. I'm telling you, you're wasting your money and time. It's all ego. If you let them go, you get them back as you work on yourself. But you got to work on you. Harmony is a first-time caller out of Arizona. Harmony, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hi, Jesse. I just want to say you're great and God is good. And his but, mercy uh, endures found- forever. Um, I found you with Roseanne, so I haven't been really listening. Um, But you said on her show, you have to forgive your mother. And I was raised in a Irish Catholic family. Then at 11, I went to a Calvary Baptist church. And now for 24 years, I've been living in Sedona. So I've done quite, quite a bit of forgiving, surrendering, finding self out. Um... But I have a mom that I've always felt responsible for since probably the age of six. And we haven't talked for two years. She, I went to her two years ago and I said, Mom, you know, this, this, and this bothered me and this and that. And she sat right in front of me and shrugged her shoulders up and looked at me like, oh, well, there's (laughs) nothing I can do. And that is for you to figure out. And so still today, she's not remorseful. She still has not changed in any way. And I know you have to let God, let it just be God. But now it's two years, and I'm seeing how I'm still holding on to some type of resentment. And my question is, how do you forgive someone who doesn't seem to have any remorse? 
Well, you forgive them because you, as an individual, are wrong for resenting them, for being angry at them, for whatever they have done, and uh, and not realizing just as you are in misery, they're in misery, you can't help yourself, they can't help themselves, something else is driving them. And your mother is in misery, she's in hell, she has no love, and whatever she's done to you, she could not help herself. And so if she never, if she's never sorry about what she's done, if she never apologizes, if she live in her hell until the day she die, you forgive her, mother, I'm sorry for resenting you for what you did. I realize now you can't help yourself, just as you can't help yourself. And God will forgive you and make you free. He will take you. Yeah, because I don't feel you. free. Right. But you will be free when you can see that, yes, my mother was wrong for what she did to me, but I'm wrong for being angry at her. And, and because that's what's keeping you from freedom. Christ came that we may have perfect peace, and, and, and the anger of your heart is keeping you away from perfect peace. And if when you apologize for being angry at her for what she's done, let she should stay in her hell. Don't expect anything from her. You don't need it. You don't need her to apologize or anything. God will forgive you, and the rest is history. See, and that's where I'm at, though, because I know... You know, just let her be in her misery. I mean, for 10 years, I've been telling myself every time I've been around her, okay, Harmony, remember she's sick. Remember she's sick. Because she has been on, we'll just say, pills since 1986, you know, and has not changed her lifestyle since then. And I know that that's her journey and her path. And She's, God she's is, evil and she can't help her. Her mother did it to her. Exactly. It is a, when she had me, she was older. Well, in that time, she was older. She was 34. So when I came into the family, the dynamics was already done. Um, but I just, for me, what I'm noticing is, like, I thought I forgave her. Like, I also have a father that I couldn't, if he's standing in front of me, I couldn't tell you if he was my dad or not. Uh, I have an older brother, 16 years older, uh, no relationship. So I have all these abandonment issues, and I've known this as a child. I've worked on it, and I've gone to church, and I've gone to spiritual Well, you can meetings. work on it that way until the cows come home. It's not going to do you any good. Exactly. That's where I'm at. It's only going to do you good when you can see that you're wrong for being angry at them. Just as you can't help yourself, they could not help themselves. They know not what they do, and you don't have a right to resent them. you got to forgive them, and then you'll be right. fine. And I feel like I'm still— Still not, I guess, forgiven, and it's painful. You're in hell. Because... <laughs> somewhat, yes. Yeah, no, somewhat. you're in hell. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, not only that, but it, you, the question of your week is morals and values. Well, I was thinking about that, too, and I feel like my morals and values, and I know you don't want to get into it, but stems from her. So, you know, um, statistically, I mean, I think it's in the book where... You know, um, I didn't have a good background. I didn't have siblings. So what did I do? I had three kids back to back. I went into a marriage that, you know, because I didn't come from a family of a marriage, that's what I thought was right. You know, so I walked down all these paths, but they're still not, they're not it. Because you have not forgiven. And the devil's telling you to use everything else. If you did this, you'll be fine. If you did this, it'll work. You did this, you need a family, it'll work. It's all lies. It's a setup. Forgive your mother. Well, and it's a setup, too, with her because the devil will be like, like, I feel responsible for her. So You're not responsible for her at all. Right. So that's part of the problem is but, that but, I feel responsible but you're not like even though i don't talk to her i still like worry about her and like like she's a kid like she's one of my children one thing that your mother was honest about is that your resentment is your problem not hers right oh my mom listen she's the smartest lady i know no she's the evenest one she's the dumbest woman you know (laughs) she did tell me the lord is my father and that's the only one i need no you need to earth your father too yeah, well, that won't happen. Why not? Well, because I was like a one-night stand baby, and so I was that baby that nobody spoke about. So your father, you don't know who your father is? No. Oh, amazing. No. 
Oh, no. I know. It well, is amazing. Le, and, and, because of time, yeah. let me tell you this. I want you to call me again. But uh, the guilt you have is coming from anger. It's coming from hatred. If you get rid of the anger, then all guilt would disappear, too. Right. And see, and that's what I was born into, so that's all I know, and that's right. all that feels comfortable. Right. Yeah. So, so do the silent prayer. You heard me talk about the silent prayer yet? Yeah, yeah. Do that. Forgive your mother so you can come out of your imagination, which, are not your, which is not your own. And God will guide you, and it'll be amazing. It, you will have no past and no future. All you will have is now. So my question, though, is not only with my mom, but we'll say four years ago, real quick, Jesse, I found out some things about our lovely country, you know, and it's the same type of um, resentment building up as, say, my mom towards knowing this information about our country. Your How country? You forward in our country, you know, oh. like our government and oh, what I they've have. been doing. When you and, forgive and so, your mother because of time, when you forgive your mother, you will never resent again, no matter what happened out in the world, because what's happening in the country is happening through people. The same right. hell that's in you is in the people of the government. They have the same problem. They're angry and can't see, and they're on an ego trip. They're about them so and no one else. How do you see the sun again? How do you see the light? How you see the sun? The light, you know, like the, how do you, like, because it's all dark. I mean, this place Well, is when you forgive, dark. you're going to be guided by the light. Okay. And it won't have okay. anything to do with the government, how good or bad or right or wrong the government is. But once you forgive, you'll be guided by the light. You'll be able to see. Okay. Okay. All right. Let Thank me know how it goes. Call me and let me know how it goes. I go. will. I will. All right. Thank you, Jesse. You're welcome. Super Chat. Super Chat. Super, super. Super Chats. Pastor Chatelet bought a coffee. Hello, Jesse and Hake. God bless you guys for all you do for Christ's kingdom. Much love from Pastor Chatelet in the Palm France. Thank you, Pastor Chatelet. <laughs> Someone bought three coffees. I'm white and slow. Love you all. Be white. Thank you. Donnie Girl's idea says, just need prayer. I don't like hell, but it doesn't look like it when I'm will- <laughs> what I'm by what I'm l- willing to put up with. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't like your hell, come out of it. You can be out just like that. It's up to you. Thank you. The key bought a coffee. Values are behaviors that lead. Well, this might be related to the biblical question. Where do you get your value? What, or, do you have more? Do you have moral? Morals. Do and you values. have morals and values? If so, where do you get them from? Where do you find them? Values are behaviors that or lead where to the did truth. You find them? Values are behaviors that lead to the truth. I found them while journeying on the wide path that leads to destruction. Now they serve to keep me on the straight and narrow path, which led me to life. Key emoji. Thank you. I'll put my two cents there on Sunday. I appreciate it. Stan69 gave a diamond on DLive. I admire the handmade details of little JLP's setup. Amazing. Nice. Hassan did that. (laughs) Amazing. My audio is in here. One of the experts here. Renesio on the biblical question. Do you have more morals and values? If so, where did you find them? I do have morals and values, and I get them from Nietzsche and Jeffrey Dahmer. Dumber. Also, Ralph's. <laughs> Amazing. Thank what you. Da? Tokomoto bought a copy. <laughs> hey, Jesse, wanted to know why you asked the last caller why his ex was Russian. I just got out of a relationship with a Russian woman who resented me for being a man and tried <laughs> to control me while calling me. One meeting her in the middle, the controlling one. I love you, man. Keep up the good work. That's why I asked, because I knew somebody had to have a Russian woman. <laughs> what now? Lin, Thank you. Lin Yen Chin answering the biblical question. I don't have morals and values. Lin, Lin, Lin Chin asked the biblical question? Answering it. Do you have morals and va- values? If so, where did you find them? I don't have morals and values, quote unquote. I have morality and can determine values, a.k.a. factors. Values equals measures. It's just applications of math, not mere ethics. My morality is mooring, or mooring is born in contrast between truth versus falsehood. I am Vulcan. Live long and prosper <laughs> emoji. Where did you get them from? Where did you find them? Uh, 
born in the contrast between truth versus falsehood. Oh, okay. Thank you. I'll put my two cents in on Sunday. I appreciate that. Shout out to the top contributors, Aries One, Stan, 69, Misty, Fatty Watt, and the rest of the supporters on DLive. Thank you, guys. Thank and that's, you. I think that's all for now. I appreciate it. Amazing. I wanted to get to Michael from Delaware. He'd been waiting a minute. He hung up, and then he called back, and now I can't get to him. Michael from Delaware. All you call it. Call me again tomorrow if you can or whenever you can. I wanted to get to all your calls, but you see what happened with time? Get on that straight and narrow path, folks, if you want to. Stay in your hell and be revengeful and burning on the inside, being jealous of others and all that. It's up to you. Forgive your mothers, men and women. Forgive your fathers. And you're going to wake up. It's going to be amazing. Especially if you see wrong for being in anger. All right? Thank you for your support. The Hake Report is coming up now. The Hake. H-A-K-E Report.com. And then enjoy our Friday TV. He black. And then the American Anchor Baby. I'll be back tomorrow. The Lord is willing and the creek don't rise. Stay on that straight and narrow no matter how difficult. Stay, endure, 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 endure. Push forward, push forward, push forward, push forward, push forward. Thank you all. I appreciate it. To the caller, Michael from Delaware, David from Norway, and somebody just dropped. I'm out of time. Have a good day, y'all. Amazing. Me. So, here's what I recommend. I invite you to download my silent prayer, and I want you to start doing it. You just download it, get the points of how to do it, and then after a while, you just do it on your own. It's going to point you in the right direction that your life will be returned to you from God. He will give you your life back because anyone and all people who has anger, they're not themselves. You are the person that you are angry at. That's why it's so important to get to know yourself so that you can see who you're angry at. And if you're doing the hooping and hollering prayers and things like that, some people get up, oh, praise the Lord, hoop and holler, bless my mama, bless my daddy. Continue to do it. Do both. You will see if you want to stay with the hooping and hollering or do you want to be still and know God. So my gift to you, no charge, at rebuildingtheman.com slash church. I noticed after a while that when these guys overcome their anger, they have amazing ideas about starting a business. But because they've been told that if you don't get a loan from the bank or if you don't have a five-year plan or if you don't do this, and it's just simply not true, it's the first step with faith, then all things are possible. So, But the most important thing is to return to the Father. That yearning that you have, that emptiness, that void, is not for more stuff. It's not for more friends. It is a return to the Father because there's no way you can return to God and be angry at your earthly father. So thank you all so, so much, right? People around the world donated to Bond at rebuildingtheman.com or they call 800-411-2663 and we're still committed to pointing the right way for men and women to return to the Father. 